Hello, welcome to Music Relish Podcast, episode 28, a music discussion podcast with Mark, Lou, and Perry, and guess who is who, who is who. Anyway, uh, tonight we're going to talk about some random relish, some one-hit wonders, some Mm -hmm. random trivia, uh, well-known guitar duos, an album review, and the album is Roger Waters' Amused to Death. Um, Mark has an, Mark Mm -hmm. has an album uh, reveal because he picks albums out of his 2000 record collection and just sees what we have and maybe some more randomness. So welcome to the show. Good evening. Hello. How's it going guys? Well, what do you want to start with? Uh, table. You want to start with, um, the top subject of the night? Guitar duos. Guitar duos. What is the top subject of the night? They're all equal. That's that's that's, that's, that's the, the big top, subject, right. yeah. The top of the top. So you know, guitar duos are in the Let's sense of like uh, Don Felder and Joe Walsh. Those are guitar duos, mm-hmm. good guitar mm-hmm. duos. Probably you right. know, two of the most famous, mm-hmm. actually, right? Yeah. I think well, they got that famous guitar solo from Hotel yeah. California, yeah. which was. Yeah, a, du- a dual guitar duo. I didn't. Th- I didn't even think of that. Still, and you know, he, Don Felder, is the co-writer of that song, right? It's still, still, his name is today is still on the song, he, right? He wrote Written the, he by wrote... Henley Fry and Felder, Henley and Fry. Don Ooh. Felder. Yeah, he he wrote the music. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was one of his demos. If you listen sang. to the version on Hell Freezes Over, yeah. that's more yeah. like what Don Felder wrote. It's more of a Spanish-sounding acoustic uh, thing. Right. Yeah, and the Gypsy King really version. Spanish version cool. of it, yeah. which is pretty cool. Pretty cool, yeah. So, yeah, yeah that was the one I had was Felder and Walsh. Uh, Lou, do you have a guitar duo? Well, I, I do. Um, it is the guitar duo of Jim Croce and that, Maury That was the other Mulesen. guy who really, uh, behind him, who, yep. Played some, yeah, played some. And they were a partnership. Um, I think he might have, uh, Maury mm-hmm. Mulesen, I think if I'm pronounce it right um even had some co-writes uh when they originally met he, they were he was a mm-hmm. songwriter he's from trenton new jersey and a producer put them together and originally croce was backing him up but then the roles reversed he became his guitarist of source but he had songs on um i think on some of the albums but uh, there's some oh, really yeah. beautiful yeah. piece of guitar playing yep. on those songs and he's a great guitar player and and, well, and it's funny because you know he died in the plane crash. Wow. And, you know, most people think Jim Croce, just like we know with the day yeah. the music died, people say Buddy Holly. The other day at work, I told someone the big bopper died in that crash. He's hmm. like, really? Yep. Rock and roll tragedy. Yep. Yeah. How about you, Mark? Well, I'm going to start at the top as the first guitar duo that I knew, and they're jazzy. Dickie Betts and Dwayne Allman. That was some of the best duos because yeah. listen to um, mm-hmm. Memory yeah. of Elizabeth Reed. That's all written out. And that's like a masterpiece, that stuff. But they were telepathic yeah. with each other. They were great. And one of them was playing slide most of the time, which made it even more amazing. Yeah, probably Dwayne Ullman. Where he yeah, was he was slide master, master wasn't he? Yeah. And uh, Dickie was more of a chicken picking, southern, typical southern sounding. Yeah, uh, but I, I've think. heard him even on those hits. Even on the hits, you can tell what they're doing together to counter each other. It's really interesting. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, those, those, um, those Almond Brother hits, I can't think of the name of them at the moment, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah, man, I don't know if uh, – did they have, like, Sweet Melissa and all those things before mm-hmm. Dwayne Ullman died? Uh, Sweet Melissa was – yeah, that was Brothers and Sisters. That was before he died. Uh, so that was a songs classic like period, that yeah. where, you know, I can really hear, um, you know, I can really yeah. hear the duo getting to work. Um, if you listen to Fillmore East album, which everyone knows uh, – mm-hmm. Mountain Jam, which if you hear the expanded, it's like 40 minutes long. And they're literally like, they're playing together. And, and it, it's like, yeah, wow. Yeah. Like they know, they knew each other inside and out. Right. Telepathic. It's not, it's different than saying like Clapton and Almond because that was just that one record. Yeah. You know, and uh, they weren't playing together so much. They were a guitar team, but they weren't sharing yeah. duties, you know. But Dickie Betts and Dwayne Ullman, absolutely. Uh, all right. So here's one I have. Okay. Steve Stills and Neil Young. Yeah. That's a good one. To, uh, Lou's rebooting his computer. So, um. Reboot. Reboot. Yeah. 
like on those Buffalo Springfield, uh, right? And even in yeah. uh, Crosby Stills, Nash and Young, right? Right. Steve um, Stills and Neil Young, yep. You don't always think of it, but uh, if you listen to the, the four-way street, that live album, uh, they were doing yeah, some good yep. stuff together. They were actually jamming. Yeah, yeah. yep. Excellent. Yeah, okay. what have you got for one? Well, you know, here's the headbanger in me, but I'm going to go with the classic hard rock. Uh, Tip, Glenn Tipton and K.K. Downing from Judas I knew Priest. you were going to say that. Dow- Tipton you knew and it. Downing from uh, Jesus Judas Christ. Judas Priest. Is called. Oh, Judas Priest. <laughs> no, the priest of Judas. Um, you know, heading out to the highway, that guitar solo is a yeah, typical yeah. example of their – it's yeah. almost southern rock That's sounding. That's all, all I know of them are those rockin' – commercial numbers but they're they're good yeah. rocking numbers you know they, they also had a very good relationship uh, a unique relationship was when they were recording their solos in the studio they had yeah. a competition so glenn would lay his turn tar- because a lot of their solos too just went back and forth so glenn would lay mm-hmm. his thing down then you go to kk top that kk would do his thing and then to kk would say now you top this so there are solos where they're going man left right left right back and forth they also played together. yeah yep uh, very good duo. Very good. Du- of hard rock, of heavy metal, they were like the Dickie yeah. and Dwayne. Um, I know who they just, are. Yep. I, yeah. I, actually, I know who they are. And I've seen them like on that Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony where they were uh, yeah. doing their old Frail. thing. Glenn's looking I've real got frail. one. Yeah. Keith Richards and Mick Taylor. Mm. At that point, that, that uh, Rolling Stones at that point was like, yeah, that was the guitar duo. Right. Mick Taylor, right. Because they both, they both play leads. Keith Richards played a lot of leads. On, really? Uh, yeah. Um, that was the time, that period of, of Rolling Stones is when Keith was most in tune with another guitar player. Because when Ron Wood came in, they kind of do their separate yeah. things, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, and it, that's, that was that was an excellent period of the Rolling Stones, you know? So. Yeah, that was, uh, that, that was the, that's my favorite. I mean, I love the Brian Jones period. Yeah. But yeah. the Mick Taylor, I mean, I guess that was their real prime, man, you know, with the, when Mick Taylor agreed. and Keith were the duo. Uh, that's my favorite. And uh, Get Your Yeah Yeahs Out is probably, yeah, one, if not the best live album, one of the best. And uh, it's funny, Keith, like some other guitar players I listen to, he can make a rhythm guitar sound like a lead guitar. You know what I mean? He's almost like a piano player the way he's attacking it. Yes. So, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, uh, I've got one that I wasn't a fan, you know, way back when they started, but I don't know how you feel about this. James Hetfield and Kirk Hammett, Metallica. Yeah. That's, a, that's he's valid. The, he's, Very the, valid. The, he's the good guitar player. Mm-hmm. James, James Hetfield. Mm-hmm. He's better than people might give him credit for. Because he's not the lead guitarist, and but he does right, solo, yeah. right? But he does he does play uh, he does play nice nice guitar. So I consider you know what? that to be a duo. It is a duo, and it's funny if Kirk Hammett weren't there, Metallica, or in the beginning Dave Mustaine. But if there wasn't that second guitarist, yeah, it wouldn't be the same Metallica. So they are a duo. I mean, they 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 uh, they riff off each other, and uh, yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Yep. And uh, what else do you have on your list? Because okay. I, I, got I only some... wrote a few down knowing you guys are going to write some and Lou was going to write okay. some down. So. I'll go through some of mine. Um, yeah. I'm going to say a band rather than a guitarist because they changed so much was Thin Lizzy. Yeah. They always had good guitar duos, but they changed the guitar player's spot. You had John Sykes. You know, and you're Gary right. Moore. You're right. But, but um, even like on The Boys Are Back in Town, that's a guitar duo. Yeah. Yeah. Who, what were their names? Do you know? Uh, oh my God, this is, uh, this is, I can't remember all, all the, like the original names, but, um, the, yeah. the one guitar player is still with them or right, they're not Thin Lizzy. They're, uh, they have another name. Uh, but at some point, at one point, Gary Moore joined the band. He was there for mm-hmm. one album. Um, Snowy White, who I've mentioned, he played with Pink Floyd and Roger Waters. Yeah. He was in the band for an album, but they always had the dual guitar attack. The, the melod- that was totally playing together. Melodic, you know melodies and everything yeah all right so i'm going to move on i'm going to go with another hard rock heavy metal duo which is as relevant as judas priest is dave murray and adrian smith from iron maiden 
they do a lot of stuff together and separate. And, yeah. you know, again, like what's missing, I think, with heavy metal nowadays, back then they were playing together. It was melodic. So you could have the heaviest song and they're singing about Satan and everything, but then you got this great guitar solo. We're missing that right now in rock. I, I don't hear that stuff, you know. Uh, yeah. Very good players. But, though. but he, he the, well, I understand that the, the singer, Bruce, Bruce Dickinson. Yeah. He left for a while, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. they really, they were like went down the tubes and then they got him back. Yeah. Right. Well, they, same thing happened with Judas Priest. Uh, uh, you know, um, you know, there's, they lost uh, Rob Halford left mm -hmm. and they got a guy named Ripper Owens in. And uh, they played the chance in Poughkeepsie, that small place when they had Ripper Owens. Same thing with Iron Maiden. These yeah. guys were playing clubs for a while. They got their singers back and then they went back, you know, up. And it's kind of sad that the singers that came in, some people showed them a lot of hate. Hey, singer guy, give him a break, you know. So if you're if you're a singer and you're offered to fill Rob Halford's spot, why are you going to hate on him? If you don't like it, don't listen to it. But, you know, I wasn't crazy about those periods, but I wouldn't Yeah, damn yep. the, the guys that came in. I mean. So, uh, yeah. Okay, Let's I got a really, really unique one. Uh, F uh, Robert Fripp and Adrian Ballou, all those albums in the 80s with King Wow, Kingsley. you know, I didn't think of that, but that's, yeah. that's uh, Mechanical duo, because yeah. if you listen, a lot of the stuff was like, do 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 yeah. doing like, and um, over, it's just playing together. It's a shame that they yeah. fell out with each other because they had a great relationship. And uh, Adrian Blue, boy, he brought the, he brought the songs. He he he. Uh, those are some great pop songs that they yeah, recorded yeah. with him. Uh, Heartbeat stuff like that. So he gave he gave them a second life, King Crimson. And uh, so I always yeah, I like that stuff. And I for the life of me, I've tried to learn some of that stuff. Oof, I can't. <laughs> Let's put a search signal out for Lou. Ding. So, uh, do you have another one? Another duo? Yeah, I got. You know what I'm going to bring up. Here we go, baby. Oh no! Oh no! Don't Jesus. don't do it. Don't I? Not the other don't one. Say, and don't say Uncle Jerry, Jerry. Garcia and Bob Weir. The, don't do Bob it, Bob Weir, and because you know, you know it. They are a duo. They never played solos together. But yeah, just know, like Keith it's Richards, true. it's true. You know, Bob they Weir are, when he hits those chords, they compliment. Yeah. yeah, they are. And, you know, when you yeah. when you hear Bob Weir solo. It's great and everything. I like it, but it's, you know, I have Garcia there, or now it's, you know, the Dave. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, they were, they complimented each other. That's a definite guitar duo. Definitely. And then cool. you could, by extension, you could say Garcia with his bluegrass stuff with Dave Grisman, but that was more playing a mandolin, you know. But these, these guitars that complement each other, having the same style like Jews Priest, mm -hmm. then you've got two totally different styles somehow meshing, as in Keith Richards and Mick Taylor. Yeah. Keith Richards never was a blues player to me. He's bluesy, but even like even with the Brian Johnson, he had a, a, a it was pure rock and roll. That's just my opinion. Whereas Mick Taylor was the blues guy. Yeah, that so was a yep. perfect pairing. And then Ron Wood, he was he you know he's a rock and roll guy too. You know, but uh, you're right, Mick Taylor's yeah. his solos were just great. Yeah, to me, yeah, that's that's. Uh, I mean, I know Ron Wood is a great guitar player. Also, they are oh, a duo yeah. together. Yeah. I just favor the Mick Mick Taylor. Uh, segment yeah. in there the section ron ron wood it's funny it's, if you take mick taylor and ron wood i enjoy ron wood's solo albums more than yeah. mick taylor's because ron wood's a composer he writes songs yeah, yeah. mick taylor was a was just a blues guy he you know he played he wrote great songs but yeah you know, I, that, that's the difference between those two and then mm -hmm. we know brian jones brian jones played yep. everything but guitar <laughs> you ever notice you ever notice on the gibson guitars these humbucking pickups that look like that yeah. And you see the screws face north and the screws face south. Looks like speed I, bumps. The Les Paul I had had the same thing. The neck pickup face, uh, you know, with that. You know why they do that? Polarity. The, the yeah, right. The um, the neck pickup that's facing north, mm -hmm. the, the, it's wound clockwise. Okay. And then the, the bridge pickup, which is facing south, is round, wound counterclockwise. So the polarity, the, it's a north-facing magnet and a southern-facing magnet. So I guess now, they do that so that they don't, uh, the field doesn't interfere. Let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to switch the pickup around, what would happen? 
nothing would it would be it would be fine. So a is lot there of a people reason? Think that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's there's no way there's no wrong way to do it. That's just the way okay. Gibson. When you buy a Gibson, that's just the way they have it. That way, you can turn the the you know bridge pickup around if you want. But it it absolutely is uh, for the polarity and the north and south. Yep. But so remember uh, the Peter Green Les Paul Greeny, right? Uh huh. Now that one had different. The the I think the pickups both face this way or both face that way or whatever. Kirk Hammett from Metallica owns it now, I think. But the Peter Green one, he got, he was able to get this in between phase on the pickups. And it's mm. not because he reversed one of them or that. He had one of the pickups worked on. And whoever repaired the pickup screwed up the polarity on it. So that's how oh. it ended up with that with that sound. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting, because I play a Strat, so it's not a humbucker. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. You're in, Lou? Yeah, I'm in. Hey, you got uh, any Lou, duos? Lou, so we were carrying on with guitar duos. You, and uh you uh, just you know the show just began i got booted and you just start you just kept you, know, you booted yourself man we no, didn't I didn't, boot no you. i didn't boot myself i got rain Carry coming <laughs> wow so yeah, guitar duos i mean guitar well, gee, duos yeah who didn't we talk about yeah, well you know who we didn't no no you know who we didn't talk about aha here it comes the the famous guitar duo of calicchio dedovich <laughs> You're not a guitar player. <laughs> I'm a guitarist. I'm the best guitarist in Asheville. I'm better than you. I bet, you are. Yeah. You're better than me. I'm better than Mark. I'm better than both of you guys. I bet. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> Pretty damn good guitar player. I was down there but, when we were recording. I, no, no, Mark and I. Mark and I were doing heavy metal before, right? <laughs> yeah. not, that, was, that was fun. Mm -hmm. So I, I know when I get kicked off, I get kicked off for ten minutes. It's a ten minute penalty box. Well, I'll tell you who mine were. Mine were uh, yeah. Don Felder, yeah. Joe Walsh, okay. Keith Richards, Mick Taylor, Ooh. Steve Stills, and Neil Young. Hmm. Those, those mine, were mine. Were, um, mine were Dickie Betts and Dwayne Allman, Glenn mm -hmm. Tipton and K.K. Downing Priest, yep. um, Adrian Fripp and Robert Fripp and Adrian Ballou. Fripp and Ballou, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, I got cool. the Schmitties there. Uh, Dave Murray and Adrian Smith from uh, Iron Maiden. Hmm. And Perry loved this one, Bobby Weir and Jerry Garcia. And then I mentioned Thin Lizzy, but no special guitars because they changed guitars, but they always mm -hmm. had a duo, you know. Snowy White. Yeah. So, Lou, uh, you yeah. had Jim Croce and his uh, other guy, right? And, and more, more Mule Eyes, and that's all I got that I got booted. But I do have Gordon Lightfoot and Red Shea. Yeah, there's another one of those mm. guys, like the Jim Croce guy. They're they're playing, enhances yeah. what's going on uh on the you know the, instead of just the acoustic strumming you know? right right and also I and mean, he he was on that epic whole period and you know yeah, was, there yeah. was a more of a collaboration more of like a musical he had you know yeah, it wasn't just yeah. guys sitting there waiting to take a solo yep um so here's one from the the the, the pop metal uh realm brad gillis and jeff watson from night ranger yeah oh. they were they were known as a duo yeah. shout out to jeff watson great guy All right Talk did we to him say on angus young and malcolm young from icdc oh that's a good one okay uh let's turn the page like bob seeger said <laughs> um, <laughs> wait do i, I metallica do i do i have the drum thing <laughs> i hope so there oh my go. god thank you okay i got keith and whoever <laughs> keith, keith richards well, yeah, I had Mick Taylor well, there's, well, there's, and uh, Ron Wood and Brian well, Jones, so you're well, right. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But Mick, Mick, Taylor, Mick Taylor, that that's the best. You know, I, I agree. Yeah. That is, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We agreed. That um, was the best. Ray and Dave Davies. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Dave Ray and Dave Davies. Yeah. 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 So listen that to is, Victoria. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, that definitely. Sorry, and, we're late tonight, but Ray my brothers. And, Brothers being a bit of a see you next Tuesday. Man, that was a great concert. Oh boy. Oh boy. He um Yeah, well Dave Davies did his bit for rock and roll for sure. Yep. Yeah. 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 He invented heavy metal. Right? Right? It wasn't Jimmy Page, it was Dave Davies. I, I would yeah, that's what that was well, not Jimmy Page. That was not I him mean, on yeah. the really got <laughs> it. The only one that didn't play on those records was uh Mick Avery. That that we covered mm. that drummer that 
played on all those Kings. Mm-hmm. That guy was good, man. Hmm. And he went on to do a lot of shit. Mick Avery anyway. stayed with them through the 80s. He was with them a long time. And then on those earlier 80s rock albums, that's the guy from Argent. I forgot his name. Gosling. He- he- some- Bob Henry. Bob Henry. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. I-, I think that we're, uh, par- I'm paranoia. I said paranoia. I think that's Mick Avery. Okay. Yeah. And I hate the, I, you know I hate the drums in, the, in that record in particular. Like, that was that was my benchmark for when I would step back from the drums when I started playing like a meathead. Oh, it's a great drum track to me. But <laughs> I'm a, a guitarist. I don't know. It, you know? It's so ch- it's so chunky. It's such a yeah. it's so, playing so chunky. It was hey, do you have any, rock do you have any more guitar duos? I'm done, man. Besides oh, me and okay. you. Besides okay. me and you. Yeah. And, hey, uh, um, and me and Mark. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We're, one day we're going to play on the Music Girls podcast. You, uh, Lou and who? Lou and whoever. Yeah. yeah. Listen, can I break in, guys? We got something. I just want to say something. I know we don't normally do this on the show, but I want to say happy birthday to Walter Dusseldorf, the smartest man in the world. He has finally achieved the amount of trips around the sun that I have, and he's almost attained my intellectual uh, curiosity. Now, happy birthday to my best bud, Walter. Okay. Walter, what's his last name? Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. He's un- unfortunately for where I work, he hired me where I work. They never oh. forgive him for that, but oh, cool. he they did help me with great things. Good guy. Happy birthday, Walter. Maybe we'll have him on the show one. He he's he's a fan of some really good music. We have not had a guest on the show. We're being selfish. I'm working on my son in law. Oh, really? okay. Yeah. So, so Elton John yeah. had a record company called Rocket Records. Remember that one? Yes. Hmm. He had he signed uh, Neil Sedaka was on Rocket Records, so they, it was an actual record company where they signed, you know, not just his own records. They, they actually put out, and um, Madonna had Maverick Records. Yeah, yeah, right. Hey, on, they, on, on, the, on the Rocket Records, um, yeah, the Neil Sedaka song. Remember Bad Blood? Yeah, yeah. That was probably that, that was like a, was that a Elton John song that Neil that was Sedaka on Rocket did? Records? Yeah, was yeah, that on Rocket? Yeah. Okay, yep, well, yep. that makes sense. Donate. Yeah. I Get think it was a I think it was a Neil Sedaka song. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe, I think maybe that, that was one of his comebacks. Like that was one of his comebacks. That yeah. and um they say that breaking up. <laughs> he did he did a slower, more um Yeah, yeah. But um mm-hmm. Madonna had Maverick uh-huh. Records and she signed Alanis Morissette. Alanis wow. Morissette was on Maverick. So yeah, it Maverick. was a real Maverick had a lot of grunge. Were, were, were the Beastie Boys on were the Beastie yeah. Boys on Maverick? Maybe. No, they Maybe, had their own yeah, Grand know. Royale records. Casino but, Ro- Camp Grand they, Royale. They, I think Grand Roy- I think they started their own. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we did them at CPI. The, the, we did and, the cassettes, uh, not the band. You mean cassette productions um, initiatives? And, or the, and apparently Dave Grohl has Roswell Records. Yeah. Yeah. I got Roswell, a shirt. Georgia. Well, there's a Foo Fighter thing. You know, Roswell, Foo Fighter. You know, it's all. Uh, there goes my hero. Yep. And uh of course John Prine, Oh Boy Records. Mm-hmm. That's right. And uh Wilco, I'm curious to see if Wilco with their DP BM uh PM record signs other artists other than their yeah. uh, their own. Yeah. They're gonna sign Jay Farrar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh they have a new record coming out, don't they? Wilco? They just put out one, not they a just country. put one What's out. Called? A cruel country. No, that's, oh, that's the country record. It's a country record, yeah. They're, uh, they're coming to Asheville. I think they're playing. Is it, they might be playing the Thomas Wolf yeah. Auditorium. Pat Sansone plays a lot of uh, telly with a B string bender on it on hmm. this record. Yeah, yep. I would think. I would yep. think. The B string the the B string bender for those who don't know is what. It's a, it's a device that was invented by was it Clarence oh, yeah. White? Yep. And Bob um, Parsons. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Dwight, uh, Dwight Yoakam mm. has this young hotshot guitar player. He dressed mm-hmm. in a nudie suit when I saw him. This kid, ah, he could be forty. He looked like a kid to me. He had he had hair like Jimmy Page, long dark curly hair, and he was doing the B string with the. Yeah, he was so cool, really good. Yeah. At it. Brad Paisley is good at it. He's Brad Paisley has some of these guys have G string benders, and then some have two. Where the B and the G yeah. band. So it really sounds like a playing a pedal steel guitar, but they're good. These guys are good, man. Yeah. I found the G string. I found yeah, the G string. No, it sounds funny. They have they have G string uh, benders, man. Yeah. Some they're all different design now. Now they have them like you press on your hip. They're a little yeah. bar, you wow. know, all sorts of things. Yeah. I think Jimmy Page uses the hip one. 
in the firm, you'll hear it. Hmm. Uh, no, I know on the honey drippers he used it. Yeah, well, their I think version Perm of too. "Sea of Love," I think, or uh, yeah, one of those. Yeah. That was Jimmy. That was Jimmy Page playing guitar, wasn't it? Playing a yep. bender, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can hear oh. it just subtly, you know, yeah. like yeah, okay, cool. And then you don't have rocking to be at midnight, to do it, you know. Yep, and rocking at midnight was Jeff Beck. Too good, yeah. He had them both on that album. Yeah. So you know, remember we were t- you know Peter Green, the guy who had that famous Les Paul from that was in Fleetwood yeah. Mac. He's Mr. the guy Turner. that. Uh, so Gibson Gibson puts out a reproduction of the Greeny, right? They, that's what they have. Uh, as in as in Manalishi. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. Well, Peter Green, right? Peter Green. <laughs> but so Gibson that was his puts last out. Name, wasn't it? Gibson puts out this uh, reproduction. Let's <laughs> call fifty thousand dollars. Out there, Greeny. Oh, come 50, on, 000. man. Okay. <laughs> Fifty grand for a, a repro. Every, like, every kid on the block is going to have one. Oh boy! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Thanks for nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can afford 000. that. You know, do I want to eat or uh, you know? Fifty thousand. Yeah. Where's it all going with all this stuff? With the money? With the music? Well, they probably only produced you know a hundred of them, and you know what's that? Five million dollars if they sell you know, a thousand of them, or what? You know what I mean? They'll have a mm. limited run. It, it, isn't it ironic that a guaranteed path to being poor is to become a musician, but everything involved in music costs you your whole your whole yeah, paycheck, really. your whole yeah. mortgage, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yep. And yep. if you do make it, you you have to make sure, especially in today's thing, that you've got a deal or such where and things yeah. are set up where you will make money because you know, like, like David Crosby and all these other people are saying that streaming, you know, the artist is not making money. None. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which is so before them to we do- we're. Yeah. Go ahead, Lou. Are we going? We're going random. We're going random. Because we're random we're now. From... We're random yeah. relish. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're on the well, plane. We're on it. All right. So uh, um, last week we were talking about David Crosby, right? Yes. The late, great David Crosby. And we can talk about Tom Verlaine later because you know, this is <laughs> it's going. Um, I found some David Crosby trivia, some interesting things when I was Ooh, reading yeah. about his cool. background. Okay. One, what was his zodiac sign? I don't know. It meant a lot to him. I know that. Yeah, but I don't know. Mark? He's on, Gemini? He's on 12. No, he was a Leo. Okay. Maybe I'm August a Leo. 14th. Maybe I'm a Leo. Kareem. Um, Deeper. What classic author was, it seems like he was most likely related to um, through his father's side. He was, um, on his mother's side, there were Van Cortlands, and on his mm-hmm. father's side, there was Van Renaslair. But there was a very famous author, classic literature, it was part of the Van, Nas- Van uh, Renaslair line. He wrote Moby Dick. Wow. Moby Dick? Oh, uh, <laughs> I can't I mean, remember his name. Initial, initials HM. Herman Melville. Herman Melville. So you're right. saying David uh, Crosby was a blue blood? Uh, it, would, it, would, it would seem so. Whether okay. he tired easily or not, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's funny. So um, there's a quote in the first. I think in the first chapter of Moby Dick, it goes like this. It touches one's sense of honor, particularly if you come of an old established family in the land, the Van Renaslers or Randolphs or the Harda Canutes. So the father's family name was mentioned there, but that little, I, I thought the Harda Canutes was kind of funny. So what I did, I, I Googled it. And the Harda Canutes were uh, a ruling, ruling royal house in middle-aged Scandinavia. Uh, the most famous king was Knut, C N U T. So if you got a mild case of dyslexia, you could actually say <laughs> You're gonna get yourself punched. Uh, right. Now this character is portrayed in the Vikings TV show. Uh, they they've used him. So he was considered one of the, one of the greatest um kings of that era. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so he was the grandson of um a man named Harold, H A R A L D Harold, uh Gormison, known as Harold Bluetooth. Hmm. So, you know, what it was, he was a king that united these separate, it was like mm-hmm. uh, England, Norway, and Denmark actually became part of a kingdom at one point. Um, so he united, you know, the kingdom. So whenever they started Bluetooth, they used his name as a sense to um, you, you, uh, unite devices in a way that Harold Bluetooth united these three kingdoms into one. So I thought that was, that was just a weird obscurity. So David Crosby can actually go back further to that. Wow. Um, the Bluetooth logo consists of, I'm reading right out, it's a quote, of a younger 
Futhark bind rune for his initials. So if you look at the um, Bluetooth yoga, uh, logo, it's Harold Bluetooth somehow in this ancient Scandinavian rune. So all that from David, David Crosby. Cros- David Crosby to Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. Wow. All right. And going back to the little dyslexia thing, to say that you'd have to be Yoda. <laughs> See next you Tuesday. <laughs> Oh my God! So he would have been blank the great. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a song. No, uh, yeah. I, so I, I looked up the Vikings TV show because I haven't seen it, and you know it's, it's, it's fictionalized. But um, there's a guy, a guy plays Leif Erikson, but mm-hmm. there there is a Canute if that's if that's pronounced correctly. Canute. You Canute. You Canute. I knew he what? went back to our like founding fathers, and you just went further back. That's amazing, though. You know? like, <laughs> of course, everyone blue- goes back further, but you know what I oh, mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, we all do. Yeah. Um, and he well, invented saw, Bluetooth in his family. They invented I saw the Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Well, I said, the, but no, the creators of Bluetooth, like, <laughs> <clears throat> were they scanning Were they scanning everywhere? Were they from Denmark? And what made them reference that obscure character, I mean, from history? I mean, could so they? they might, maybe they had a sense of, maybe that's their family, like a nationalistic background where, like, you know, they worship Harold Bluetooth and Canute. Yeah. Maybe they meet yeah. in Switzerland every other year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Davos. Little, little groups. And, and in fact, in, um, in one of those groups, or was it, was it David? Carter? I found something somewhere. Oh, Peter Gabriel. We were talking about him. Um, he's part of a group called the elders. Hmm. That was started by him. It, it's Jimmy Carter's in it. It's all these leaders and they actually have a voice. They'll go talk as dignitaries to people in all these mm-hmm. different countries about whether it's um, equal treatment for women, uh, you know, poverty, war, all these things. But Jimmy Carter's in it. There's like um, elders yeah. emeritus. So but they're not Gaffet, a who, society. Right, no, no, no. But he started no. with Richard Branson. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. So it's this thing. But it, yeah. there's all these. There. Kofi Annan was in it before he died. I and mean, there's some serious you know, people in there. But uh, And Peter right now, Gabriel's in it. And he's right. Yeah, he was initially. He, he's like, he's yeah. on the board of directors of it. Okay. Yeah, he but, was involved uh, with the UN. I could see that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and all, yeah. all his interest, you know, his things with world music and things like that. But I thought they they named themselves the Elders. It just sounds like something like you know, like, like it's, it's out of a Marvel movie. You know, I, I think they have. You know, they're they probably go there. They levitate in there. Well, <laughs> they, if they want the, <laughs> to the tune of sledgehammer. Hat- <laughs> well, if they want the tinfoil hat people to go crazy, calling themselves the Elders is going to create lots. of... Oh yeah, absolutely. The elders. <laughs> you know, do you have more David Crosby uh, trivia? N- n- no, but we were talking about Peter Gabriel. We were, yeah. Remember last week we were asking, we were talking about Daniel Lenoir, and we weren't mm-hmm. sure if he produced the So record. He did. He did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. And um, we but, covered uh, we, we covered were, that on the. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, well, we weren't, weren't, yeah. right, we, weren't we weren't sure. We weren't, we weren't sure. sure. Yeah. 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 No, no, we covered that in the past episode. Okay. Yeah. And you, you talked about you actually. Uh, I, your Daniel Lenoir was one of my. Uh, yeah, yeah. One of my. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we forgot for a week. Was that um, in your first ten years of the podcast before I joined? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. It was, right. uh, yeah, back in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Back in dial up. <laughs> you guys invented podcasts. <laughs> so I, I got I got a trivia question. Both G- Peter Gabriel and Genesis they they each only had um, one number one hit in the in the U.S. Do you know the names of each song? The Peter Gabriel number one and the Genesis number one. Nope. It's the same. It's this. Well, okay. I, um, Mark right now. Okay. There, I'm all, take there, a step. There, there's another side trivia. Peter Gabriel. If he had a number one hit, what would it be? Well, with Genesis. With Sled- What's that? With Genesis. No, Peter Gabriel solo. He had a no. He had one number one hit, and also Genesis as a band only had one U.S. number one hit. Okay. Um. um Peter I'll Gabriel, take a stab. go ahead. Peter you Gabriel, take a stab. What, 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 he had a that's big what, hit. Uh, I say sledgehammer. That's what OJ said. Let me take a stab at it. <laughs> we were oh. just wrestling. Oh boy, uh, Mark was over with sledgehammer. So sledgehammer was number one. Number one. Eighty six. All right. So the, bet the you that video it, had a lot to do with it too. Oh sure. That, yeah. That's that, apparently that is the most played video on MTV. Apparently. Really. Um, yeah, nice. <laughs> um, also, but what it did was it knocked a Genesis, it knocked Genesis's number one out of the top number one spot. So Peter Gabriel left the band and got to knock Genesis off the number one spot. And what was Sledge the song Hammer. that he knocked out? What was it? What was the Genesis song that he knocked Would out? Would it be? So it's the same, it's the same year as Sledgehammer. I know. I'm just thinking what song off that album. Um, total, I'm, total, I'm, total pop, total pop. Invisible Touch? You are correct. Mark, I both. It's a good, you know Schmitty. what? 
I like that period. I'm sorry. I, I listen to Invisible Touch again. I like it. I don't care if someone says I hate that album because you, you couldn't know, hate it. But. Mark, I've become more forgiving as time yeah. has gone on. Um, there are some good songs in that on yeah. that record. Tonight's. Yep. Tonight, 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 tonight. If it, tonight. Were, if it wasn't used in the Michelob commercial, because th- th- that definitely tainted things, you know. Absolutely. And right. that's something um, I want to visit in the future. Commercials that made us sick like of songs. Monkey. There's plenty of them, and that's one of them. Yeah. And the other one was Eric Clapton when he did hey. After Midnight for Michelob. Hey, I think hey, with, with, with Michelob. Yep, yep. Was that, was that intentional? Yes. All right. Now, hey, what did, now, where, where did Peter Gabriel record his albums? In his barn. In his barn. Yeah. Uh, the house is called Ash Ashcombe House in Somerset. It's it's a it's okay. apparently it's a gothic thing. It's not going to register, mm-hmm. but he, he he rented it for a while. But um, Robbie Robertson recorded some of his record there. And yeah. uh, Johnny Mitchell, he recorded three records there. He did the Birdie soundtrack. Yeah, great movie, great soundtrack. Nobody's it seen would, that movie. That's a really good movie. Matthew Modine and Nicky Cage. Yeah, Nicky Coppola. Nikki Coppola. Coppola, yeah. 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 So what else we got? What, what, what um, are we going? What, what you know are we going what? On just, as an yet. aside, that that studio in the barn. I think I think if you look at his Facebook page, he has pictures of them recording, and I think it's the barn. I think he's still using it. It's a beautiful looking place. They're in this mm-hmm. huge cavernous room together. It said he was there. In, it said he was there until 1987. Oh, okay. So I wonder when yeah, he recorded I, the I, new I, stuff. I think it's. Um, yeah, I think I think so was so was the last record he recorded there. Okay. All right. right. So I came across a YouTube page called Classic Album Review. And it's this guy has his page and and it's a pretty good channel, you know, it's a classic album review. These guys really into vinyl, really into classic stuff that a lot of, you know, that a lot of uh, uh, we're pretty much into. So he has this is his pick, his 10 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame shameful omissions. His first one, number 10, and for him is Kansas. He says they should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Kansas. I agree. Now, good, hmm. They're America's progressive heroes. Man. They're the yeah. they are number one yeah. progressive band. They are, aren't they? Yep. And then his next one, number nine for him, This, these are his picks. King Crimson. He says they should be in there for influence I alone. I agree. You know? I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Very ahead of their time. They, they predated grunge yeah. with uh, the Red Eye. Yeah. And weren't they the first prog band? Apparently, yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, that's, that's yeah. what. The, and this guy, he's he's Brit. He's from England. Is that, is, is that a contentious uh, point? Or are there are there other people who could be? Well, can, no. A lot of people say the first prog album was Sgt. Pepper, but as far no, as group, yeah, no. yeah, it's considered a prog album. But uh, no, as a it's group, not. yeah. Do you, do well, you think the it nice, is? the nice was around before King Crimson, but they had a, such a bloody bad singer. I'm sorry, he was horrible. Hmm. Or it's King Crimson at Greg Lake from the get go, sixty nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had wacky time signatures. The Beatles didn't have that on Sergeant yeah. Pepper. Well, Prague so isn't that, just wacky time signatures. Avant garde pop. Out. So this right. guy's English. There you so go. He's, he's picking a lot of English bands. So his next yeah. one is Free slash Bad Company. That they should not. They should be in there. Mm-hmm. The, the Rolling Stones. I don't, I don't think. I, don't think for, I would give Bad Company before Free. I don't think. Yeah, well, I, he I just said them both because of Paul Rogers, you know. So yeah. Paul, and, Paul Simon, and Simon Kirk. Yeah, <laughs> Paul Paul Rogers. He's he's a legendary singer. I just yeah. Bad Company didn't break any new ground, in my opinion. No, nope. Free too. I mean, Taste was out before Free, and they had the kind of that bluesy rock. I mean, I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say they can't get in. But mm-hmm. yeah, 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 I, I yeah. wouldn't put either but, one in. I wouldn't put yeah. either one. So his next choice. Although, although I, think, I think Paul Rogers is a rock and roll Hall of Fame worthy singer. Oh yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And, and maybe on the strength of "All Right Now," maybe mm. I mean that's that, that's a classic. That that's classic, another classic, man. Classic, yeah. yeah. And, and not just a very so, singing, it's a very soulful the vocal. Guitar solo is one of the most memorable guitar solos right. that there ever right. was. And the, the, the whole know? the whole playing, like you know, the bass gets boom, boom, this everything gets a chance. Yeah. And Simon yep. Kirk. You know, yeah. he's a, he's a, Simon Kirk is a great rock and roll drummer, solid time guy. Yeah. You know, he, he does, he does play fills. He's not without flourish, but, uh, yeah. you know, good, real good, basic. Drummer. Yeah. Yep. yep. Well, this guy's next pick is for, uh, rock and roll hall of fame. Shameful omissions is ELP Emerson, Lake and Palmer. I have to agree, but you know, I agree, says I, I agree. Be in there. Yeah. They should be. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you know what people that detractors of ELP say, and they, they have a point. 
ELP blew their load by 1973. They put out all their best albums, and then after brain cell surgery, they the rest of the decade they they did some good stuff, but not mm-hmm. albums that were cohesive. And then they did Love Beach. What a way to go out! <laughs> that, yeah, I actually the stole one. the album cover on that one. That was embarrassing. Uh, too, much love pastel, to too much pastel. Too much pastel cover. Beach. Colors, you know? Yeah, yeah. So this guy, uh, you know who he picks next? For a well, shameful omission of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Joe Cocker. That's who he yeah. picked for next. Yeah, y- you know, I, I, I thought he might have been in. Yeah, yeah. Per- this guy posted this days ago, so it's uh, and, and, and that, that would definitely be a, it would be a posthumous entry. You know. Yeah. Why he's Joe dead? Cocker, Joe Cocker? Cocker is dead. He's oh, really? dead, isn't yeah. he? He died. I he don't died, know. Yeah. Right. He did. Yeah. Just read not long bummer, ago. Man. A couple of years, yeah. I think. Okay, um, so I never gave him much old, time. I never old, gave him much mind. Like I say, he's good and everything, but then I I read about him and he did something like he was. Yeah. He's a towering figure. In I music, like him so. singing those Beatles songs, man. I I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. I I would like to read a, the book about that tour, or is yeah. it a book or a documentary. Um, yeah, it book. was it was rough. It was rough stuff. Mm. So so this guy, classic album review is his channel. His next pick for shameful omission of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Loyster Cult. Yes. I and mean, this guy's English, and he... Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. You know what? I would say they, they should, another they one. should unique, be in. A unique sound. They didn't sound like anybody else. They they homogenized a bunch of different directions of music. You like that? That's my yeah. intellectual yeah. statement. And, yeah, yeah no. they were very very unique. And, and, uh, mm-hmm. a, and yeah. there's, peop- yeah. there's, there's people in the Rock and Roll Hall who've had less success than those two giant hits that they had commercially. Right, true. And, the the Reaper and the have, other one, right? What was right. the other one? Even though they didn't have giant radio hits, all their albums sold really well. I mean, even like some yeah. didn't sell well as others, but you mm-hmm. know, I think I think BOC operated at a profit for you know most yeah. of their career. You know, and they're mm-hmm. they're very interesting. Well, what was another big song other than uh, the Burn It for You? Burn It for, for, for You. That was a smash hit, man. Right. So there and, are people who had no, less no, success than that that are in the Hall of Fame. They've had three top forty hits because uh, <laughs> Take Me Away. Oh yeah, um, the, the revolution yeah. by night. It was actually it's Eric Bloom's only hit. You know, mm-hmm. he was the lead vocalist in, in Blue. He sang the bulk of the material. And yeah, anyway, I want to talk about. Yeah, let's that. not go down a rabbit hole. But uh, Buck that Dharma, was no, no, Buck Dharma but, is a better singer. I, that was that's his my pick. opinion. N- that was now his he pick. is, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, so okay, so I, guy, I agree with that. I, I, yeah. yeah, this guy's next pick was Sticks. For shameful omission of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Shameful. They I know they're be. hated, but they those be. albums they put out from uh, Crystal Ball up to Cornerstone are really good albums. Well, you can what, hate what them all you, you mean, want. What do you mean that you, they're they hated? Melded, like, oh, a lot of people hate Sticks. Come on, they're the butt of jokes. A lot but of people love they them are. too, right? They melded. This is true. Uh, they melded. They had a golden time when they took Prague. They they shamelessly did Prague. Dennis DeYoung did his glitzy mm-hmm. keyboards and pop. They 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 fused it before Yes did it with nine hundred one two five, before Genesis did it. They were doing mm-hmm. pop Prague, in my opinion, and Seems heavy so. some heavy stuff. Yeah, yeah, one of these guys. I don't know if it most people don't know the album has cult, cuts, but mm-hmm. the guy was saying that somebody in management of one of these groups had a problem with Jan Werner. Or you know the guy from uh, Rolling Stone, yeah, uh, Jan Venner. Yeah, yeah. Any, yep. Any prog band would have a problem. Who did I say? Jeff Beck, keyboard Weiner. player. Yeah. <laughs> he said Jan Horner. <laughs> he said Jack Horner. Well, you know who Muse- I meant, right? Music relish yes. blooper. <laughs> so uh, what? But they said some. I think it might be the Vlores to Cult guitar player says that. Yeah, somebody's got a problem with the Rolling Stone magazine guy. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Stop, Rolling Which Stone didn't like anything you know? remotely progressive or remotely. They, heavy, they had a heavy, certain heavy. very opinionated writers, but yeah. I still so, subscribe to it. Here's another one for this guy. Shameful omission of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, according to him, Jethro Tull. Yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, Who real, sounds maybe they, like what that? are they thinking, man? You know? And maybe Jethro Tull hasn't done anything since they won the heavy metal Grammy or whatever. Oh, they've you know, been putting they, out they, albums. They, they, had, they had an impact, and they had a lot yeah. of fans. They had yeah. a lot of fans. Yeah. They, you know what yeah. they did? I always related. You had that direction that like Unique. fairport convention and yeah. um uh what's his name the guitarist uh, richard, richard thompson. thompson yeah they took that and and yeah. were massively successful with it because yeah. a lot of people from that were in those circles of fairport convention end up playing with jethro Tull, and, and they and just like, put out an album about a year ago it's really good martin barr is not in the band that's a bummer mm-hmm. 
but it's all Ian Anderson, but that last album is, is really good. And he's shirtless on the cover. He's 70 something years old. I know. Here we go. It's a great album though. Cool. Well, this guy's next one for shameful omission is super tramp. That's his next one. That's his number two. What do you think? Number two. Yeah. I like them. I don't, I, you know, they have, they have staying power. They have staying yes. power. Yeah. Yeah. Why, I, I why say, shouldn't I, they be in the rock and roll hall I, of fame? I, I know. On, well, I'm, I'm, know? I'm, I'm, I, I, let, I let my personal because I'm thinking when that when Breakfast in America came out, I Huge. was about to, and that was like junior in high school. Like I, I remember that period. Like yeah, it was kind of catchy. I didn't, I didn't mind. When, Give a little bit was a nice song. You think about yeah. it very much in its time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, but I realized I hear the music on the radio a lot. So that that's yeah. something you know, they're they're like a sleeper band. You know, I yeah. don't know really many super tramp super fan. Well, uh, uh, Tom. Tom's Tom Spallone, Spallone, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But is. I don't know many people that hate them either. He's on the cover of one of their albums, "Crisis." What crisis? The guy Tom's laying Spallone. there with a drink while the whole world's <laughs> burning down. He himself said it. That's me. <laughs> you ever see that cover? No. It's like everything's burning down, buildings burning, the world is collapsing. There's a guy laying back with a drink and glasses and swimsuits, and he's just having a good old time, not just caring. Tom's like, away. "That's me." <laughs> cool. He showed that cover. So this but guy. That, um, go ahead. Now it, it's a, I was I've been getting into their older stuff and I'm liking it. You know, it's it's very unique. Again, they had their own direction. Yeah. Now that doesn't always get you in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. No, right? yeah. Like Lou yeah, said, yeah, staying that, power. Yeah. Yep. You know. Right. I'm gonna be a dick. We know Roger Hodson. Who's the other guy? <laughs> oh. Um. Ah. Early morning yesterday, right before the dawn. <laughs> oh, Jim Neighbors. Uh. <laughs> Golly, sir, <laughs> Shazam. Isn't it terrible? I, I can't. I thought you. You know. I can't remember. <laughs> Jim, Jimmy Neighbors could sing. Yeah. And he continued the band after Roger Hodson left. They did a couple albums. <sighs> yeah. Davies, something Davies. Richard Davies. Rick, Richard Davies. Well, Rick, yeah. Rick, 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 Dave, Rick Davies. Rick Davies. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. You know, my dad knocked over Jim Neighbors in an airport. <laughs> Purposely? By, it was an accident. Did he say, golly? I, my father's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. But he apparently was like, no, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but he was performing at the island where my father and stepmother were. So that night, they were at the gym neighbor's performance, and he was making his rounds. He goes to table table. He sees my father. He goes, oh, no, 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 no. So that was uh, that's random into, relish, my I, friends. I and walked this- into to- Jackie Mason in Times Square. Wow. He Did didn't you know? give me a nice look. He was kind of pissed. <laughs> really? Huh. Oh, this guy's number one pick is Grand Funk Railroad for a shameful omission. Put him in. Put him in. Yeah. Put, yeah. put him in. Yeah. You know, I, Perry, I think every one of those, I think we agreed every one of those should have been in the Rock and Roll Fan. Yeah. Right? He's yeah. got a couple of honorable shameful mentions. I'll omissions. just go through them quickly. Humble Pie. Yeah, yeah, do it, man. Rainbow. Motorhead. I think they should be in. I'm, I'm not sure. Head, I'm not sure. According to Motorhead. him. According to yeah. him, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young are not in the Rock and Roll of Fame. You know what? Somebody should find that if that's true because, boy, that's a crazy mission. If, you know. They probably knew they couldn't get them together for the ceremony. That's why they didn't induct them. <laughs> nah, I don't know about that. Mo- but Motorhead if, should have been in. Motorhead was, right. they, I think, yeah. yeah. But if CSN I, and Wire are not I, in, they should be. I, I, I bet you Motorhead will get in. They will get in. Yeah. Yep. What about Humble Pie? They could. You know, like, it wouldn't be like, bad if they could. went in. Yeah. But, but like, say, Kate Bush was nominated, yeah. but she did not no. get enough votes to get, you know, actually be inducted. But she was nominated this last time, Kate Bush. I don't, th- I don't think so. E- even with the Stranger Things using Running Up That Hill, I don't know. Maybe I'm not that versed in her musical. I've heard. Fair well, she about. may never get in, but the point is she was nominated. I guess yeah, as an yeah, influencer, yeah. Or, you know. I, did I just say influencer? I like her. Influencer. Yeah. You were an influencer, influencers. Perry? I'm not an you influencer. No. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you you guys are. I'm not an influencer. I know Mark is. Hey, that T-shirt, Perry, it almost looks like the cover to Secret Treaties by Blue Oyster Cult. What is that on your T-shirt? It says Air Miami. <laughs> it's an it's a yeah, album yeah, cover. Yeah, That's yeah, what it reminded yeah, me yeah, of, didn't it? The, the, yeah, the group's called yeah, Air yeah, Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oyster boys are. Oh, yeah. oh yes, I have some for for the record, for the record. That's what I'm calling the segment. For the record, for the record, you know that in 1976, EMI Studios 
was renamed Abbey Road Studios in honors of the Beatles' final album. Yes. 1976, yep. And now, now, now it's called Abbey Road Studios. So, um, yeah. Oh, interesting. I always assumed it was always Abbey Road Studios. No, the it was EMI until 76. Yeah, EMI. It was EMI. Oh. Uh, the record we're going to talk about tonight, part of that was recorded at Abbey Road Studios. Many albums. Right on. Many albums. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Now, remember that jo- documentary with John Lennon? Where they're recording Oh Yoko and Phil Phil Spector's with John behind in you know in the yeah. vocal room. And John's getting pissed, like bloody hell, Philip. Like, you know, they kept going to the wrong spot in the tape where uh, you know, and Yoko's trying to explain to him, No, it's after the second verse, or you know, whatever, just they keep bringing it back. And John's getting pissed off at Philip. Bloody hell, Philip. You, you know, it's Philip McDonald, the engineer, who's I've name heard is- Mm-hmm. I'm going to check that because I've heard so many people say he yelled at Phil Spector. And well, I'm sure he yelled shot. at Phil Spector, but when Phil, Phil was in the vocal booth with John singing the backups yeah. to Oh Yoko, he's getting mad at Philip, and that's Philip right. McDonald. His name is on Boy. the back of the Abbey Road cover Boy. as Poor an Phillip. engineer. You're a tape op. Yeah. You got Phil Spector next to you with a gun. You got John Lennon yelling oh, at you. That guy was probably gun. fucking, give me some but, tea. But his name is on a Beatle. Is on Abbey Road on the back cover. It says Philip McDonald. Cool. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, yeah. He's he's an engineer. Yep. No. Uh, what was what was Lennon yelling at him? What, what was the, the words? Because they couldn't. He wanted to get to a certain spot in the tape, so they yeah. kept rewinding it, but at the wrong verse or the wrong chorus that they wanted to do. Okay. And he was getting pissed. <laughs> yeah. And yet they're trying to calmly explain to him, no, you have to go past, you know, past this verse or whatever. And uh, right. He couldn't get it right, and I guess, you know, I mean, you know, John Lennon is John Lennon, right? But Philip yeah, McDonald, the-, the engineer, his name is on the back. His name is on Abbey Road, the back cover. Was that the um, the one where he's doing How Do You Sleep and he calls uh, Paul McCartney, I'll see you next Tuesday? <laughs> was that the Imagine? Was that the yeah. Imagine? No, what, what, what Lennon documentary are you talking about? Well, there's a couple it was of the them. One, I don't remember which one it, it was. I think, it's, yeah. I think that's the one where he was recording which album, where George Harrison came and played on one cut. I think it's that documentary. Well, George played on Happy Prime. Sleep. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. If, if it's Imagine, I think it's, it's, it's the one called, I think it's called Imagine, right? Yeah. Anyway, I'm not sure. Yeah. It might have been. Yeah, there was one called Imagine. Yeah. The, 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 that's when the, 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 the hippie kid, the kind of disillusioned, slightly yeah. off hippie kid yeah. shows up at the house. Yeah. yeah. Now, George Harrison had one of those people show up, but he broke in and stabbed him, you know? That's a, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. But you, was, you, was, you know that you watch, though, when when you see that scene, right? They're outside yeah. his house, right? Yeah. Hearst Park yeah. or wherever they Hearst were, Park, right? right? Yep. Yeah. He and um, Yoko and John are there, and he's like, well, are you hungry or whatever? There's a guy standing by. Oh, yeah. Behind oh, yeah. them. Believe me, that's a bodyguard. So that guy oh, yeah. get tackled. You know, oh yeah, it was probably a yeah. big Mal Evans. You know, it, what I liked about that scene is like the guy's able to question the great John Lennon. What do you mean by this? What do you mean? And John Lennon's like, it's just stupid <laughs> lyrics or something like that. He's like, don't, well, yeah, you know, yeah. he was like, don't worry, because he knew this guy could be a little crazy. That's what he was doing. Sure. You know? I was going to play years. the bloody hell. I have a sample of it, but that'll get us shut down. So I'm not going to play it. Hmm. He was and American he, though, right? Yeah. No, I was going to say, yeah. I got the bloody hell. Yeah, play the clip, man. No, we can't play any Beatles. Nothing. Not even that. Sorry. Oh, yeah, because they're, yeah. Going, they're yeah. playing old Yoko. Yeah, so that's an actual. If I uh, couldn't even play Mick Jagger saying, I busted a button on me trousers. That'll get us banned, too. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll put these, um, I'll put the clip up on the Facebook page. Yeah, you, you should also put a clip up of Lennon playing with Rick Nielsen and Bunny Carlos on some of the double fantasy outtakes like i'm losing you with them i never heard it. those i want to hear them they're yeah, cool the box set, I, you can I, get them yeah uh, yeah i yeah. You, you can see why it didn't make the record although they're good on their own it, yeah. it was it just wasn't as slick as the rest of <laughs> yep. the record yeah. it was a pretty yeah. slick record you know? yes. yes it's a good record too double fantasy i like it yeah double fantastic <laughs> yeah double funda. and uh oh for the record halle berry can't act just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, she did a good scene with Billy Bob Thornton. I'm just saying, director's she's, cut. She's a bad actor. Mm. And on the X Men movies, this is what she does. <laughs> yeah, and makes weather happen. And yep. she, oh, she rise in the air. Her eyes look, actually look like my I look like mine because <laughs> reflections. I can make weather change. 
Yeah. And uh, <laughs> getting cold. Oof. I saw Neil Young. Ooh. I saw Neil Young interviewed by um, I forgot who interviewed him, but they were having a discussion about songwriting and mm. art. And they said something interesting. They said your job is not to figure out what the audience wants and please them. Your job is to do what you do, write songs the way you write them, not like try and write rumors right. too, or Peter Frampton with I mean you, you're in I mean that was just that was trying that was trying to give the audience what they want and please them, which is yeah. you know, you're supposed to just write songs and you right. know what I mean, not go out of your way to please people. But not not every artist can not bow to record company pressure either, you know. Sure. So I, I think a lot of those cases with like a, with the Peter Frampton, I, he didn't have any choice probably. Well, I know? mean, Rush went through that, right? When they were like they were they were giving no. up on him, and they came up with twenty one twelve or something. And well, he said, yeah, the, uh, that was early on. That yeah, was early both twenty one twelve. That was a record they were not supposed to make. Yeah, you know? but but the thing is that they, they had fan power. But you know, there there are some people that can be uncompromising. You know, Van right. Morrison. You well, Van I think Morrison's they're trying to point out that you know, if you're if you're a true artist, you just you just write. You, you right. know, yeah. what I mean, you don't. Not, you're not writing a jingle, right? You know, well, there are people. Who, there are people who, who can churn that out. You know, and be on their yeah, merry yeah. way. You know, right? Well, laugh all the way to the bank, probably. Can Can but, you imagine <laughs> Van Morrison going? I got to make an album that my fans will like. He doesn't care yeah, if the fans right. don't like it. He does what he. Well, that's why he did an album where he recorded yeah. thirty songs in a day. Right, <laughs> ringworm. Right. That's that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, look at Bob Dylan. Um, same yeah, thing. Same he, thing. You know, I mean, he yeah. earned the right, but he always did. So, if, you know, from the beginning, he's always done everything he wanted to do. Yeah, correct. Every single. I'm not, you think he, I'm a protesting or I'm not a protesting or? Yeah, ex exactly. I'm a but, you know, singer. Yeah, and you know, he also he he bucked the trend. Yeah, he rattled the cage and stuff like that. But everything he got to do, everything he wanted. I heard um. Uh, love sick. I forgot what album it's from. It's 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 from early nineties. I'm sick of yeah. Love. Damn. Yeah. Is the album called Love Sick? No, it, it might be no. on. It might be on No Mercy. I think. I think it's on No Mercy. Okay, I think, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Um, but I heard on the, on the way to the service this morning. I'm like, God damn, you know, just yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. Yeah. His Bob uh, You know, there's gonna be there's gonna be haters. I mean, it's it's interesting to me. Like when uh, yeah. He's That's getting right. booed, you know, him and the Hawks are getting booed everywhere they go because merely he wanted to pick up an electric guitar instead of the, you know, the acoustic. Yeah. What's that movie, Perry? Don't look back when they're interviewing the don't guys in back. London. They're like, he should be shot. He yeah. should be shot yeah. for what he's doing. Like, really? Whoa. Judas. Wow. Judas. The yeah. folk Judas. Yeah, that was Judas. Like the Royal Albert Hall. I think they're calling the him Judas. The <laughs> folkies right. were militant. The folkies. Oh, my, my God. My favorite part yeah. is when Richard Manuel is trying to buy that guy's girlfriend. <laughs> I don't remember that part. <laughs> Neither do I. I got to oh, check no, it wait, out. Wait, wait, was that, you know, was that e e Eat the Document? I don't know. I don't, I, I've seen so many of them. I don't know which the, one. The, the DA Pennebreaker one. And there's one with JD there, Penny for your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, right. Now Richard Mann was trying to offer some guy money for his <laughs> Danish girlfriend. You know, Danish, Denmark is popping up and all over my stuff today. Um, music Relish randomly came up. Hmm. For some reason, Denmark has come up. Um, King Canute and Harold Brute, Bluetooth, they were, they were Danish. Walter Dusseldorp is Danish too. Do they have Danish? Let, let, let's get some Danish for Bell. I had a cheese Danish the other day. I love a cheese Danish. I love a good yeah. Danish. <laughs> I like a so good glass of wine. Is that, so is that the national pastry of Denmark? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask him. <laughs> I will ask him. Remind me, and I'll get back to the Music Relish podcast okay. next yeah. week. So <laughs> Thank you. Greek diners. No, Greek diners have all, right. all the cakes. They have all the cakes on the the, the cake shelf. Yeah, on, on, on the carousels, on those yeah. on those uh, display things. <laughs> uh, Greek diners. Uh, I, I'm on the Seville dining. Yeah, there are, there are no Greek diners <laughs> no, down here. There are the no comedy? diners here. <laughs> what That's was the terrible. comedy? There are no diners down there, man. What are you living on a friggin' plateau or what? Well, come on, man. There are no twenty-four hours. You can get you can get a, a Monte Cristo. You can get Taylor ham and eggs. You can get a steak and chops. You can get a lobster tail. There's nothing here. Like they, places here call themselves diners. They have like shrimp and grits. Well, I, 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 I do notice that you, South, you're losing your New Jersey accent. Your diction is so uh, get you know, out of different here. now. 
Fuck you, you. You referred to the, <laughs> the capital. Danish, the you referred to the capital of, of, of uh, New Jersey as Trenton. Podcast it's Trenton. No, no, I did not. You did. You said Trenton. It's Trenton. Yeah, it's Trenton. You're losing your accent, Trenton? man. You you got that. You know, you have this regional diction now. Oh, great. I like sent Walter a message. Yes. <laughs> uh, if I hear Louis talking with an accent, I hit him. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No. I've been here almost 20 years, man. That's wow. all. Yeah, it went fast. Well, for yes. us. You know, yes. And I just love those Trentonians. Our doggies. Lou. Oh, no. Lou. Yeah. I gotta go see Fifi. You're looking. So are we going to talk about this Roger Waters uh, record? Perry, for you, I knew you wanted to hear an 80-minute album. That's why I recommend it. What's it called? All That You Can't I, Leave Behind? Yeah. Or uh, what is it? Okay. Let me All, give you a uh, brief something. introduction with, with, with no names. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the album we're going to review this week is Amused to Death, released That's in 1992. It. it took them five years to get it together because I remember reading an interview in 1987 in Penthouse with Roger Waters. Yes, I bought a penthouse for the interview. And he said something about this species has amused itself to death. And I said, That's perfect. This is a masterpiece. In my top ten albums, if I was put on a desert island, this would really? definitely be one of the top ten albums. Your the theme kidding. of it? You got to be yes. kidding me! <laughs> the theme of it? Oh, you keep going, boy. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. It's gonna be I'm a music world me- takedown. I'm, I'm not a third party mediator. I'm just gonna watch this happen. <laughs> so the the theme of the album is the mm-hmm. species is amused itself to death. That's all you could say. You know, it's 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 depending on the song. It could be people that find war entertaining which is bravery of being out of range. Um, how we just can't help but kill each other. Uh, very good players on this album. Yeah. Jeff Beck, mm-hmm. Steve Lukather, Jeff Pacero's on a track. David Page is on a track. There's a lot of good players. Um, my favorite songs, real quick, the opening ballad of Bill Hubbard, which is an actual World War I veteran. World War I veteran. Right. Who left Bill Hubbard on the battlefield because he couldn't get him off. And it he dogged him his whole rest of his life that this guy died. He had to leave him. And you hear this guy talk. Wow. You know, um, perfect sense, which has one of the best lines ever. Part one. I'll or read part it. Two. Yeah. Uh, per, part one. When the what's her name? P.P. Arnold sings. She goes, the Germans killed the Jews. The Jews killed the Arabs. The Arabs killed the hostages. And is it any wonder the monkey's confused? That's a great line. Um, and it's about wars and famous, defense. by the way. Yep. Uh, Bravery of Being Out of Range, which is, again, about armchair war enthusiasts, which I, I just love those lyrics. <laughs> Three Wishes. That's got one of my favorite Jeff Beck solos out of his whole catalog. It's a great bluesy. You know, just tears right. it out. It's a miracle <laughs> where he gets out his anger at... Um, uh, What's his name? The guy that wrote Cats, Andrew Lloyd Webber, because Waters hates Webber because he claims Webber stole some Pink Floyd music for uh, Phantom of the Opera. And that great oh, line is saying the wow. piano lid comes down and breaks his fucking fingers, talking about Andrew Lloyd Webber. The end of that song has the best example of that Jeff Beck technique of hitting a harmonic and using your whammy bar to make a melody. It's right at the end of it before it goes into um, the last track. And then my other one, Too Much Rope, another great lyric. Muslim or Christian, Mullah or Pope, who was it wrote, give anyone species too much rope and they'll fuck it up. That's a great line. Yeah, it's a great line is right. Yeah. What was the, what uh, was the songs you had about God? What God wants, what God God wants. gets God help or us all. One, what two, do you think? And three. Yeah, yeah. Four, five, and six. Um, what do you think he meant God was? I don't know. Good question. God, God was the ape that was supposed to be changing the channels on the TV set that his initial concept when I read was like, he pictured like a, a chimp just randomly changing channels and just finding what, what humans are fucking up all over the place, you know, because <laughs> what, what I got from like, you know, the stuff about, you know, the, when, when the first Gulf War happened and we're, you know, there was, there was a scud stud, you know, they had a newscaster was like a scud stud. That's how they, yeah, they yeah. made it yeah. mainstream. War is entertainment. We, we watched that war happen with, with the smart bombs. We, we watched the assault on Baghdad 
Yep. And it, it was entertaining. I mean, I, I wasn't yeah, I was appalled. From a hotel but, room in Baghdad. From a hotel room, yeah. But we're watching that from the comfort of our armchairs where we're all, yeah. we're, we're all five-star generals, right? You, you know what horrified me, guys? I was in high school when that happened. I'm sitting with – or it was after, right after high school, but I'm sitting with all my high school friends in the living room watching it. And um, when they had broke in that bombs over Baghdad, you saw the lights, you know, everything going. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the room was like, yeah. oh, cool. They thought yeah. it was like a video game. And I'm like, guys, people are getting killed. And, and the babies and children are being killed. Innocent, yeah. innocent people like, who are, or are not going to see us as liberators are, yeah. are being killed. You know, they're, they're, yeah. they're so that was, you know, surviving like, relatives. I think people have been so dis, in, uh, what's that called? desensitized. Des yeah, that they thought it was a video game. Or yeah. Whatever. You know? Well, it, it, it helped us become desensitized to it because it allowed yeah. us to watch that from like, like you're watching a movie. Like the you're first watching from the, from the cockpit. Yeah. The first war covered by 24 hour news cycle. Yeah. 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 Now, what Ted about Turner. Roger Waters? Well, what about, he was a bass player with Pink Floyd. That's right. And, well, and we were talking about his album, weren't we? Well, we were, but the album is, the album is about the, the, the entertainment value. Everything we're yeah, talking yeah. about is exactly what he's talking about, especially yep. about the it's guy about sitting at the media. bar. Yeah, <clears throat> people sitting at the bar. Yeah, get some. Yeah, know, it's, it's, I mean, our, it's like it's avant-garde to, to the full, you know, the fullest tilt. It's avant garde. Yeah. There, you hear televisions yeah. in the background. You hear radios in the background. You hear all sorts of uh, right. The, right. The reason yeah. I told you to listen on headphones is he used Q Sound. Now Q right. Sound was a technique back before everyone had their surround systems. With two channel, you could get surround sound. It's mm -hmm. like things out of phase. So if you listen on headphones, you hear some weird, funky stuff going on. Right, and Mark, I, I didn't do it because I'm trying not to use headphones much, but my. My speaker system, I have a really good television system. It, it, oh, the good. sound was really good, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know if you're not a fan of Roger Waters, this is a very idiosyncratic record to, to me because I don't know him as much I know as his thing in Pink Floyd. Um, it could be viewed as didactic at point. Oh, if you look at it lyrically, if you're not into the concept of it, mm -hmm. because, you know, like it's, they're stating things. You could be a Muslim, you could be a Jew, or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I do think like, you know, like, like Pete Townsend, he's one of Rock's great authors. You know, these guys had, they could right. take a concept from beginning to end and formulate it and come all the way, like the walls, the things, they were conceptualists, right. you know. Yeah. Um, the, the playing's great. Jeff Beck is the best thing about the record, <laughs> um, yeah. in my opinion. Is, is, is that him playing on the first song? Oh, Pete Townsend the, yeah. the seems to yeah. do it in a more melodic way to me. Yeah. yeah Roger right. Waters, you know, he's got that. Uh, he used a lot of his, I call it his um, Hey You voice on this record. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hey yeah. You. Um, yeah, that kind of, but it's so distinctive of him. Yeah. You know? The thing is, that you got Roger Waters without David Gilmore. So that's what made Pink Floyd work. So when Roger Waters did pros and cons, I loved it. I'm a Roger Waters guy, but mm -hmm. Pink Floyd fans mm -hmm. didn't like it because just like, well, Meets to Death right. is a lot more like pros and cons is very, uh, very uh, heavy. Like, just like, uh, it's hard to describe, but. Um, yeah, he doesn't have a David Gilmore, so you're not going to get a comfortably yeah. numb with a Roger Waters album. But that's fine right. by me because I like it. And I, I know that very few people, like, it's hard to sit through 80 minutes of it. I can. I can do it all the time. So, in fact, today I listened to it twice. Yeah, I, I, listen, I listened to it three times. Wow. God bless you. I'm going to give you a well, minute. It's, well, you know, my, my sciatic nerve is acting up, so I took a couple of days off of work. So I'm, I'm, I'm on, laying on the floor doing stretches. I'm trying to stretch this thing out. So I'm like, it's a great time to listen to it because I'm already in pain, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I wish I could do like a Woody Allen thing, but it was it's a good, like, I, I'm a, it's a bit didactic. <laughs> <laughs> Woody oh, Allen or Bruce I Springsteen. The, I used the big word there. Come on, man. All right. <laughs> well, what, no, but I mean, Woody Allen, with, with, you know, the same thing. So, yeah, man. To me, it was just, I don't know, too preachy, too wordy, uh, too I thought many it was, parts. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Absolutely. I really like that yeah. second song. Uh, what was the second song? I think P.P. Arnold. What's the second uh, song on the record? That's Perfect that's, Sense. Perfect Sense. That's, well, well, that's, well, that's, that's I the really like What God Wants Part One. Oh, yeah. God the wants. first one is the Battle of Bill Hubbard with the guy talk, with the right, veteran yeah. talking. Then it's What God Wants. Then it goes into Perfect Sense. And that's the one uh, with the girl singing, and that line I just read. Which, if someone doesn't know this album, the point of view they what they heard me say, they might go, "What is he saying? It's not <laughs> racist right. at all," you know. But then I then I scroll down. I'm like, "Oh, there's a part two. There's a part three. Where, you that's know, the theme I of mean, the if album. it were one continuous thing, it'd be it'd be forty thirty seven minutes long right there by mm -hmm. itself, one song. So yeah, it mm -hmm. had to be broken down into parts. I would think, right? 
Yeah. So but when I hear that, a... I just thought number nine, number nine, <laughs> number nine. You know, <laughs> this was his, his third solo record. Um, yes, he did okay. pros and cons and radio chaos. This was the yeah. third one. Yes. Uh, 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 songs. I like, I like three wishes amused to death. And I, I, I like the first song. I, I thought it was interesting. When, once I, it came on, like this, this isn't a record you listen to in your car. Like you no, said, you gotta, you gotta, yeah. you gotta be in, a, in, in an environment to do it. What it's I a find, whiskey um, album. I mean, I, I like too much rope too. So I, I do. Oh, I, there some, I heard too. some Pink Floyd influences in there. I mean, come on. Roger what, Waters. This, was what I find interesting about Roger Waters is that like these songs, when you hear Roger Waters songs, like you can almost visualize a performance. Like you know, he's that mm. theatric. Sure, oh, in yeah. his oh, writing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. could be a play. This could be another absolutely, wall, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, that's what yeah. I hear from Roger Waters. There's a yeah. cinematic scope to it. Correct. Yeah, a, absolutely. Theatrical. Yeah. 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 Ironically, this was the only album he didn't tour behind. Every other album right. he toured behind. I think maybe he just couldn't. He figured if I'm going to do it, it has to be done a certain way, and he couldn't mm -hmm. get it together. Right. You know, Jeff yeah. Beck wasn't going to tour with him. Jeff Beck didn't want to go out in the world tour, and right. you would need Jeff Beck, you know, to do he it. He played probably. great. He played very. He played great on it. Oh yeah. The, yeah. You know. I know. Well, Jeff. Beck. Oh, and by the way, Lou, uh, Three Wishes, the one bluesy song with the blues. That's what Joe Jeff Picaro plays on. So he's doing that. Wow. that yeah. Show, well, I don't know what you call that, but yeah. So, yeah, so um, I said, very theatric. I found it kind of ponderous, the record, but, you know, okay, that's me, yeah. you know. But uh, yeah. but I, it's not that I, I enjoyed it. It's theatric. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I could see a performance of it. I would love to see a performance right. of it. And I, I think, like you said, Mark, the fact you didn't tour behind it, in order to do this, I mean, some of the other players on this, um, besides Jeff Beck, there's Randy Jackson on bass. Yes. Mm -hmm. Andy Fairweather Lowe, that's a journeyman. That player. guy's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. He, he's on the concert for George Harrison. Um, yeah. Uh, Steve, like you said, Steve Lukather, David Page, um, John Rabbit Bundrick. He was the keyboard player for the Who early on. Yes. Yeah. Marv Albert. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that crazy backbiting son of a bitch. Um, just to hire Mar Marv Albert to be on one spoken word on your tour. Um, and Don Henley and Rita Coolidge sang backup vocals. Yeah. I'd that, say that, that's a lot of people. Don Henley, Don Henley on, on a Roger Water rec, Water Roger Waters record. They have very, cool. they have very similar views mm -hmm. on things. But one thing, that's the one song, and I love every song. That's the one song that I would never, I don't skip it over. It's the hardest to really get into because one thing that bothers me is I don't think Don Henley's voice mixes very well with with Roger Waters. And when they're singing together, they're very not similar. totally in unison. They're kind of mm -hmm. like. Kind of, and it sounded like a demo at times, but huh. who knows? Yeah. It could have been done across the world. It could have been Don Henley in Los Angeles. Yeah. And I don't know if he went to England. And I mean, sure. think for the, right. uh, think yeah. for the, uh, you know, the Roger Waters fans like you. I mean, yeah, guy used up almost eighty minutes on a CD for you know, right? I yeah, mean, eighty yeah. minutes on a CD. He almost used 73 it all. Seventy-three minutes and twenty-six years. Yeah, he oh, they gave you a yeah. lot. He gave you a lot. Yeah. Yeah. At a time. When in nineteen early nineties, when bands were like, "Oh, you can put seventy minutes on a CD, let's mm -hmm. fill it up," and a lot of stuff was crap that was coming out. There was, you know, it should have been a forty minute CD. You know, a lot of filler. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I admire Roger I, I, I Waters to no yeah. end. I just didn't like the record. That's all. Yep. Yeah. But I, I, I am a fan. I found, it, I found it interesting. This is not something I would go to normally, but once I, I had to read about the concept. You said you said listen to it and then read about mm -hmm. it. So Wikipedia. I didn't look at any reviews, any critical reviews of it. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Again, I came up, came up with my, I found the music interesting, but I would say this is a Roger Waters fans record, but I, I, I like the, I do like the concept. I do think it's interesting. It's something I found at the time when he did this record, I wasn't aware of it, but I, I did yeah, yeah. start seeing the 24 hour news cycle. The fact that, and look at us now, um, you yeah. know, all our news. It's, is, it's, you know, uh, it's some, some, you know, some critics said they re-released it a couple of years ago. Some critics said that I can't believe this isn't even more relevant now with all the lyrics on it. Like, it's, yeah. it's well, okay. Uh, um, and and uh, I've seen him live, and yeah, it's amazing that he is. He has a special kind of fan, but he mm -hmm. still sells out arenas. The guy tours, even now that he's in a controversial guy. He sold out Madison Square Garden when I saw him. So yeah. you know, it's like not and not every legendary act can sell out arenas anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Part like Pink Floyd. It's the Pink Floyd Association. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think he's he's, also, I don't think he, Yeah. Go ahead, Luke. I don't think he's made a crappy record. No. You know, it's hard. Yeah. Some people you, you know, I like the, this may not be my cup of tea, although I think it was really good from a musical perspective. 
Yeah. You know, I yeah. think this is a good record. I mean, right. I think, you know, this is a, a serious kind. It's a very serious well, record. Well, there's the Mark. thing. I'm not always uh, in the mood for political activism either. Right. You sure. Know? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. He also, yeah. yeah. But, well, yeah. Uh, he's, his last album had a lot of his regular fans, Roger Waters fans, not liking mm-hmm. it because his last album, uh, was produced by, I can't remember his name from Radiohead and it had a more modern sound to it. Tom York. And I like Tom York. Not Tom York, uh, the, another guy. The other it's guy. Called, the album's, this, it's, the album's called Is This the Life We Really Want? And uh, I heard it, and I'm like, fresh. It was a fresh direction, which I wanted to hear, you know? He still has almost all his songs sound like they were written on acoustic guitar, right? Half mm-hmm. a wall you could play with acoustic. Right. But yeah. then he's got the radio production, and it sounds good, you know? Mm-hmm. So he's, he's definitely trying to, to branch out. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, always interesting. Does, does, doesn't every song sound like that? What's that? Does every song start with an acoustic guitar or piano? And with Roger, you, a lot. You, 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 you had to leave it at that. Uh, on the dark side of the moon, uh, the VH1 special, you can see he's playing a lot of those songs on acoustic guitar. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, okay, then you see what happens after. I've played along the whole Wall album. The whole album, you could just strum on guitar. That's a hmm. good rock album if you can strum it on acoustic guitar. Hmm. Except for the, the the opera song, the trial, you can't play that, of course. But hmm. <laughs> everything else, you can. All right, you guys want to go now after the Roger Waters? Uh... How about some entertainment? Yeah. 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 How about a one-hit wonder? Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Okay. Most of my one-hit wonders are coming from driving in my car and finding a weird song that you haven't heard forever mm-hmm. on the radio. This is an old one because most of them are, are kind of old. And let's see what we can do here. And you want to know what that song is called? I don't know. Oh, it's a I've novelty never heard it before. song. Yeah. It's a novelty song. Yeah. Is it familiar to either one of you? Not yeah, me. I can't remember what it's called. Do, 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 uh, do. Mar- Mark is not familiar <laughs> at all. I'm just way too young to know. <laughs> Yo, there you go. Um, this has been using, well, I find it's been using quite a lot of movies that you might have seen. So um, the song. It's a it's a it's a true one hit wonder. The song is uh-huh. called Alley Cat. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yep. Alley Cat. Um, the composer went by the name of Bent Fabric, <laughs> <laughs> who is a performer. <clears throat> well, um, his his real name. Oh, second. He was a Dan. Actually, he was a Danish pianist and composer. Because we have Denmark again. Danish pianist. Um, exactly. His name was Bent Fabricius Bajer, but he went by the name of Bent Fabric to make it easier. Um. So that kind of, that song came out in 1962. It, it's it's a revamping of an old song called Omkring et Flagel, which means around a grand piano. Um, so that was an old, I think it was like a Danish or mm-hmm. instrumental that he turned into a worldwide smash. It was on Atco Records, came out in 1962. One review for it said, it's infectious with a toe-tapping tempo. Um, <laughs> Say that with so a powdered it, donut. Toe-tapping right. tempo. <laughs> <laughs> So it was a number uh, number seven Billboard Hot 100, uh, number six on the U.S. Cash Box 100, number two on the U.S. Easy Listening, number two in Australia, number four in Canada, seven New Zealand, and forty nine in Germany. What was their problem? You know? <laughs> it almost sounds like some kind of European type thing. Um, I'm, I'm when our roller rink, we used to play that. Our organist or whoever would play that song all the time. That was part of the dance routine. So as a kid. Well, I was in '62. I mean, this thing was in been in my head, but it's it's kitschy, but it's it's it was weird. But um, so this was in, uh, the Alley Cat was in the movie Cabin Boy. That's Chris Elliott, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It was in the movie Duets. If you ever saw that, uh, it was an episode of yeah. Get a Life. So there's Chris Elliott again. So he probably had a little thing for the song. Uh, I was in an episode of Mad About You and Family Guy. Mad about you. Great show. Yeah. And apparently th- that theme song is used for a lot of ice cream trucks in the USA. So if you're <laughs> if you that, that coming, yeah. ice cream. It's yeah. bent fabric. It's it's bent 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 fabric. Not bent, but bent. <laughs> He's a penis from that that uh Holland. <laughs> He's a Denmarkian pianist. <laughs> Interesting. So that, so that was a one hit. So yeah, yeah. That's was, a one was, hit wonder. It, it's a one hit wonder. Billboard top one hundred, uh top forty. It's gotta be it's gotta be in the top forty. 
Now, in 1962, my dad was swearing, that's it. I had three daughters, no more. And then seven years later, <laughs> there you go. hey, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, I just like to keep pushing my age. <laughs> Mark, your children are older than mine. Yeah, I know. I started. Okay. Yeah, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, by the way. Uh, I I sh I shook shook it up tonight. Uh, I shaked it up. I'm drinking a Col Columbia Crest Chardonnay, vintage 2019. Perfect. I'm being wildly sarcastic. I'm not a wine connoisseur. You have a vintage. But what's nice about 2019? It's pre-pandemic. This was made before the COVID pandemic. That's pretty cool. Like that's what I like about wine. When you get a wine, and I don't buy wine that's 100 years old. You know what I mean. But you look at the year, what happened in that year in the world, right? So yeah. this is the year before COVID hit. Also before uh, the wildfires in California. Now, right. at, at work recently, um, our owner opened up on the Chateau Lafitte. It's a famous French wine. It's like $1,500 a bottle. Opened it. We're all like, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. I had a $100 bottle of Cabernet. Uh, of uh, Yeah, Cabernet. And I was like, all right. You know, mm. but I think it's, so you know what it is? If you were... Someone would go, well, it's got the levels of this, the levels of that, the levels of this. That's not me. I just like what I like. And I like yeah. yellowtail. Absolutely. So I, I, have, I have another one here, but I have to mute my mic for a second. So just bear with me. Okay. Perry, I like a fine wine on a nice summer day. I like a fine wine on a nice wintry day. I like a fine wine on a fine spring day. I like a fine wine when I'm, well, not when I'm sick. It's, I like it's, a fine wine after six. Okay, come on, Mark. Keep filling it in. <laughs> it's conversational narcissism, Mark. You keep, the, the conversation keeps going back to yourself. <laughs> I smell. I smell wine. This smells like wine. Are I you ready? Blues back. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is the second one-hit wonder of the evening. Well, I have, I have a little thing here. Wait. wait, wait. You know what I also like? <laughs> I, I made a logo. It goes like this. Like one hit wonder. The wonders. The, the Oneaters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was clever. The Oneaters okay. from Fragile. All right. Mark's not going to get this one either. I'm much too young. Being, being as young as he is. I might. I might. Someone fart? Yeah. Do you know it? That distorted bass sounded like a fart. It was a bassoon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who did it? What the hell? Who's going to get off the elevator first? <laughs> no, no, no. Don't you be pointing at me. Oh, no, no. Oh, this show. It's, thank God, it's... <laughs> We're in the after show right now. Oh, Can you light that, Perry? Game <laughs> over. Lou, Can I guess? You'll burn your eye, your eyelashes off. <laughs> Winchester Cathedral. Yes, it was a Winchester. <laughs> Winchester Cathedral. You bring me down. down. But who, the name of the group is. That's. Uh, I've who, only heard that a few times in my <laughs> life. Uh, the year was 1966. Who was the new vaudeville band? That's who it is? Yes. They were English. They were assembled by a songwriter named, by the name of Jeff Stevens to record this novelty song he wrote. Um, this was a number one Billboard Hot 100, 1966. So when this thing became a hit, he's like, oh, shit. They, they want, they want, the record company <laughs> wanted him to, do, do, um, to perform. So he asked the members of the Bonzo Dog <laughs> Duda Band if wow. they would. Yeah. So one of the guys actually did and took a lot of the Bonzo guys with him. But do you know the song Death Cab for Cutie is actually a Bonzo Dog yes, Duda band song? Yeah, yeah, really? yeah. yeah. Right. So now the reason he got that effect was he... Didn't um, John wanted... Lennon sing Death Cab for Cutie in that tent in Magical Mystery Tour? Did he? Or what? No, wasn't that guy performing Death Cab for Cutie? I, I, I don't know. I think I he know. was on Magical Mystery Tour. Well, anyway, wow. Yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. So the, how we got that... Um. The vocal effect, he, 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 he wanted to get the <laughs> megaphone effect, so he sang into his hands like this. Winchester Cathedral of Indiana. <laughs> which is also Bane from Batman. Now you have my permission to die. 
So that's how you do it. And Hurricane yeah. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> he went like this, didn't he? <laughs> no, I mean, it all sounds like they're like, I hope for a happy yeah. <laughs> that, that I know, baby, Leon I Red, know. Leon Redbone. Leon Redbone. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I I, I, now this was another roller ring song because that's what our family had. But and I, remember, I just remember that song forever, that and Alley Cat. Um, now, some of the guys in the band, uh, they had an interesting band names. One guy referred himself as Tristam, the seventh Earl of Cricklewood. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was Moody Mick Wisher on guitar and Hugh Shuggy Watts on trombone. Um, Wish I could also, be but now, the song Winchester Shug. Cathedral, it was a 1967 Grammy Award winner for Best Contemporary Rock and Roll Song. Hmm. It, 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 was a, it was a worldwide smash. Um, so, and um, Jeff Stevens received the Ivor Novello Award for Best Song for, uh, Musically and Lyrically. So, Ivor Novello, he was related to Father Guido Sarducci, Don Novello, right? <laughs> so, Interesting, though. Really? That was 67. So, everyone wasn't yeah. caught up in the Summer of Love, and everyone wasn't no. acid Some, rock Sergeant Pepper. and all that, Sergeant right? Pe- I mean, yeah. this song yep. right there, it's harkens back to a different time right right and yeah. it, it almost has a it, it, they consider like you know sort of vaudeville which would have been english music hall mm-hmm. um music like you know the kings come dancing that's english music yeah, hall, right yeah. 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 yeah um but i i didn't know they were i always thought they were americans but i just remember that song but i mean i remember hearing on the radio as a kid oh, i assumed they were american too. Parents. i thought they yeah. were american also yep. yeah but the, the, that whole you know the bonzo dog doodah band that was you know neil innes who was yeah, in the Ruggles yep. and other things, but um, they also played a similar type of music. So I think that's one of the reasons why Jeff Stevens actually approached them and said, you know, help me out here. You know, yeah. I, but, I wrote a fluke. I wrote a novelty song and it's a, a number one smash, but you know, a Grammy winner. I mean, Sergeant Pepper, I mean, what, we, what I wonder what that song, best contemporary rock and roll song. What were the other contenders in 1967? Was it, with a little help from my friends the by the Beatles and this thing won. Right, the association. Right? I was around it that time. could have been six, well, yeah, 66, 67. I mean, yeah. who knows? It yeah. could have been many, many things. Sunshine I mean, pop. Yeah. yeah. Sunshine but Yeah, but rock and roll. Like you were making a point there, Perry. Rock and roll wasn't the the king of all things back then. Some it wasn't all acid rock. Records. It was, that was just a right. Stanford, That was a West Coast sort of thing, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So yeah, I don't, I'll have to look up, but I believe that on Magical, Magical Mystery Tour, when they were in that, when they were at that club, I think that lounge yeah, singer was, was singing on... "Death Cab for Cutie." Yeah, I want I want to find that out. Um, so I have a um, a two hit wonder, and I'm I'm kind of bummed out about it. Two hit wonder, Be, because I thought this was, was a one hit wonder, and I found that there were two hit wonder, and when I heard their second hit, I'm like. This is bullshit. <laughs> it was it wasn't so, a hit. <laughs> well, then, I never heard it before. It's a crap song, but it's um, it, 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 their second it was number thirty eight in the top forty. But be that what be that what it may, but I have to come on my microphone. Still top forty, again. right? All right, I'm you got commuting. it ready, or do you want me to? Uh... So Perry, how you doing? I'm. I never thought I'd see you wear a Bloister Cult t shirt. Really, I'm. No, shocked. no, Air Miami. Oh, yeah. Air Miami. <laughs> and you got Godzilla. So you got two Bloister Cult related things there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, Ryan Reynolds team oh, Not Bloister back. Cult again. I heard that. Oh, Lou froze uh, up. Mark and Mark I and heard I were that. talking about Bloister Cult while you I, were I, Lou, I merely point out that Perry's got secret treaties on his shirt and Godzilla on his microphone. Two this is references. True. Yeah. This is true. He's a secret fan. Yeah. He won't admit it. I think well, he's just I waiting for them to take Godzilla? him away. Oh, he I had a Godzilla Bloors the Cult thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't make I, I the th- connection. I also know uh, uh, Perry loves the night. <laughs> and I think he sometimes, I think he's just going through the motions sometimes. <laughs> but I know he's burning for you. I know that. I do know that. Wait, where's the drum thing? <laughs> well, he just wants to hang out <laughs> at Club me. Ninja. Okay, this is... This is a one-hit wonder. The second hit wonder is bullshit. In fact, it was on the Billboard Bullshit Hot 100, you know, number 38. Okay, are they song, American or English? They're American from Atlanta, okay. Georgia. And let me see. Um, this was the number three on the Billboard Hot 100. And it's notable for its certain solo, which even though it's kind of weird, kicks ass, 1976. Here we go. 1976?
Oh. Good song. You wink and gave me your okay. Is that is that Moonlight? All right, no. You got it. You got it. Moonlight yeah. feels right. Yeah. Mm, yeah. To me, that is the pre. That is my choice for the preeminent ever ever yacht rock song. Yeah. Who I would put that? that against who is that? Starbuck. Starbuck. I remember that. I remember that. BBDB, we do Starbucks. Oh, please. <laughs> Starbucks, <laughs> Rogers. <laughs> Your dick is gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Fucking wine up my nose, Lou. Don't do that. <laughs> wine's, wine's worse than beer. Sorry, buddy. I forgot that yeah. guy's name was Starbuck. <laughs> it was Dirk, Dirk Benedict. <laughs> Dirk Diggler. <laughs> Dirk, oh, that's my night, man. We're not going there. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was 1976. Yeah. That was a number three. I remember that. I remember that. That was a song of that summer. Um, the band, the, the guy, there's two main guys, uh, Bruce Blackman. He was a keyboardist. He sang it. He was a producer, record, uh, record mm-hmm. producer, songwriter. Um, he wrote it. And uh, Bo Wagner uh, played the marimba. There is a kick-ass marimba song on that song. Yeah, there is. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's great. And um, he also was a drummer for Liberace at one time. So at one time he was just a most wonderful hey, drummer, for a most wonderful entertainer. Yeah, you guys, it is very wonderful. yachty. Mark though, in particular right. is extremely wonderful. It is very yacht rock. Yeah, why yeah. yes? It is. <laughs> I could see Boz Skag singing that song for some reason. I've been this on the Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, it's, it's all the same era. It's, it's yeah, yacht rock. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love that era. Yeah. You know something? I, I do. Talk, I, I love these songs. I, I do love these songs. When, when that song comes on the radio in my car, I keep it on. Hmm. Um, he does that's all, that song's yeah. clean. It just sounds oh, clean. Oh, it's super clean. You know? And yeah. it's got these, like, you know, probably ARP synthesizers. Um, their, their follow-up song was, um, that was in 76. So in 77, they had their follow-up song called "Everybody Be Dancing." So they were ahead of the time with this. You know, people be like, people use that term. So they're like, they're like "Everybody Be Dancing." Um, but that's on the bullshit uh, Billboard Bullshit from? Hot 100, Atlanta, Georgia. That's where they were based out of. Um, I, I listened to the the follow-up single. It's it's garbage. It can't even compete. They were trying to do a pale imitation of "Moonlight Feels Right." With that, oh, really? Yeah. So yeah, and. Where, yeah. Where, their bosses probably wanted them to do that. You know, we have a formula. Let's stick with it. Right? Sure, sure. Yeah. And, and they're probably like, why not? You know what I mean? I mean, Moonlight, that's something Moonlight feels right. I mean, I remember <laughs> seeing them perform that on Don Kirshner's rock concert in the Midnight Special. And, yeah, yeah. You know, they, that, they're, yeah. they could have been on the bill like Pablo Cruz, but they yep. opened up for a lot of people. Um, so I, but I think Bruce Blackman, the guy that sang it, when I, he produced a lot of people. I didn't go further down that rabbit hole, but. But I like that song. I like the marimba solo. Yeah, I like. That. I didn't <laughs> yeah, mind hearing yeah. it on the radio. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's yep. interesting. It's. You know, Are they in the rock? There, and there roll was a time. Time. No. <laughs> um, there, there was a well. That, that was a time when a song like that could get on the radio and be a hit. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the beauty of, of this kind of stuff. Is that well, there, there could no be big... there could be a hall of fame for like forty fives. Well, you sure. Know, singles. Yes. Or, or, right? Hall of fame for or, or one or who two hit wonders or. You know, right. sometimes these bands wherever they're from, like you know, Michael. Yeah. Remember, like Michael Stanley, the Michael Stanley band. He passed yeah, away yeah. this year. They're regional. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. But he's in like the whatever. He's like from Cleveland. He's like in the Cleveland Hall of mm-hmm. Fame. Yeah. There's a lot of local things where you know, if you're from Nebraska, yeah. Randy Meisner is in some Nebraska. I read about him. You sent yeah. that video, Perry. Yeah. Um, you know that guy. You know, but he had a rough couple of years, especially right after Glenn Fry died. That's when his wife accidentally died. But you know, he's been doing performances. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. He just looks really old as opposed to yeah. the other guys. Yeah. Well, he was the oldest eagle. He, oh, yeah, really? One of the, yeah, he was, the old, he was the oldest in the band. Glenn Fry was the youngest. Hmm. So I took my bottle of Budweiser and I threw it against that wall. I threw that bottle. I was angry. Hey, Lou, I was Yo, trying to watch sorry. the video on my phone, but it was too small. I couldn't see it. Stop I was trying it. to get it, you know, and I... I tried to turn my phone over and I just couldn't see even, it. No, listen, even when I do that sometimes, it doesn't always enlarge it, okay? Uh, anything in text that can happen. Yeah, it mm. happens to me too. Um, should we send out a, a a radar for Perry? He disappeared on us. He's got the controls. He's got the controls. I think he's got there. gas again, so he just left the room, <laughs> you know? So. <laughs> Speaking of Don Kirshner, do you know I have DVDs, <laughs> one of those Time Life things? I have DVDs, like 20 DVDs of. 
DV, DV, DV. <laughs> of um of like all the Don Kirshner rock concerts. I gotta start watching them. Oh, there's so there's so much good stuff in there. I, I'm Elvin Bishop doing Fool the Random Fell in Love with Mickey yeah. Thomas on vocals. Yeah. Um there's there were some great I, I love that dude. There's their shows were great. That's all we had. If you can if you're too young to go to concerts and no local yeah. bands and Friday, Saturday night, right? You know, you'd be old you'd be getting maybe maybe getting kind of small. Yeah. A little bit, you know what I mean? And then, you know, you go watch these shows. And me and my, you know, my younger brother, we wanted to be rock stars. We're like, this is so fucking cool. Even, even bands you normally wouldn't really thought were that great. You're just watching people playing their instruments yeah. and singing. And there he That's is. A... Hey, I had to go get, I needed, I ran out of water. We, we know that's water. <laughs> did, yeah. did you drink a gallon when you were here before? Well, I'm pouring a gallon <laughs> into a cup. What Moon vintage is right. that? <laughs> Paul and Spring Moonlight. vintage. Uh, Feels Interestingly, Lou, did you know that Don Kirshner? Oh, he's dead. Right? No, he had Kansas on his Don Kirshner's rock concert when they were nobodies. It was like one of the first things. That... Sorry, there you go. Yeah, we saw that. Yeah. Was oh, that the marimba solo? Boy, that is that is great. That's like virtuoso playing. It, it really was. It really was. It makes me feel swirly. I, I sometimes do air marimba. <laughs> is that Ruby what a marimba Barry. sounds player sounds like when he has a line of coke? <laughs> He's like all over the place. Oh my god! He, he covered every you every. Sped that one. up, didn't you, Lou? You sped that. You didn't you speed that? No, up? no, that, no. That guy, he's kicking ass on. Really, it. that fast? And he's also the drummer for Liberace, and he was just wonderful as a drummer. <laughs> yeah. Liberace was anything. a Liberace was a very talented pianist. He was a very talented. <laughs> he was. Person. He had a very talented pianist. Yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, moving Mark, forward. Want to reveal some records? Yeah. Are we, are we done? How long have we? How long have we, have we? Have we been on? Whoa. Yeah. Do you have anything, Lou? I got all kinds of shit. Okay. Um. Ooh. No. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. Ow. I got some Ow. questions. I got some trivia questions. Yeah. Yeah. We, we do. Mark, you're right. You know what do you call that? That little thing you could back in the seventies. You could. Uh, type out and it went on tape and then you'd stick it on yeah, something th th that's a that's a, a brother p touch thing now yeah well you, you, back you, in the you, day remember it was really you, thick? A little label so yeah, yeah, mark's yeah. laundry so i just tried to peel this off and it got under my fucking uh -huh. nail oh, you will I'm confess bleeding. to any crime now won't you did it, you did it mark didn't you you did it admit you did that it that happened to Music? me the other day with a piece of formica and i had to go dig uh -huh. it out man <laughs> this is an employee incident for music relish the first one uh, but, but put in the right, well, it's, we have it on film, but you know, well, no, you were off to the side. Sorry, no. Claims. And I was drinking alcohol, so Can't prove not, it. you know. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Go ahead. Yeah, let's do some. Uh, what is this trivia questions? I got I got some Beatles solo trivia. Music relish trivia. Music relish trivia. Who besides Lennon played acoustic guitar on the song "Give Peace a Chance"? Paul McCartney. No. Uh, one of he the Smothers brothers, part... Tommy Smothers. It was Tommy Smothers, yes. Uh, of the Smothers brothers. Okay. That's right. They were in Toronto, right? When they recorded that. Yeah, that's right. Um, eating chocolate cake in the bath. Uh, who plays drums on the George Harrison song, What is Life? A biggie. Oh, they're all, well, of course, they're biggies. George, George played with the best musician of all. Anyway. Was it Ringo? No, it's not Ringo. It could be Jim Keltner, Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon. But he's not right because he was the second the Batman choice. movies. What's that? <laughs> it was his second choice, so he didn't get it right. Come on. I don't yeah, want to be right. right. <laughs> That's the song, loving you know. Loving you is wrong. I don't want to be right. Okay. Ooh. Who was the drummer on Stand By Me from Lennon's rock and roll album? The drummer. Well, that was Stand Stand it a real drum? That was done in California. You are correct, sir. Right? Yes. He's a biggie. Biggie. I'm going to go with Mount Keltner. Rushmore. Jim Keltner. Okay, so we got a Jim Gordon and sound, Jim Keltner. It doesn't sound like a drum. It sounds like they're hitting like a guitar case or something to me. Oh, no, then, I'm, thinking um, of, I'm thinking in the beginning. When it's just, no, but no, I, know, I know what you mean. No, no. Lennon recorded drums weird. I thought even things, you know, he had a weird way of recording drums, and there's further evidence of that on my next further questions. Okay, who played piano on... The Ringo song, It Don't Come Easy. Not normally known as a piano player. 
He's a guitar oh, player. Oh, so that takes out what I was going to say. I described him. Someone said in our last episodes, I said people described him as a genius on last week's episode. Mm. We mentioned did he play, him tonight. Did he play guitar with uh, with Ringo at all? I don't think so. I don't, he wasn't on the Ringo tours. This, this is from um, Don't Come It Ringo is one of the first solo albums. I don't know if it's Roto Gravure or whatever, but um, yeah, I, I, when I saw this, I'm like, okay, he played piano. I didn't know he did. Oh, he, he's a, he's a member of a super group, early '70s super group, super group that we just, we even mentioned them tonight that they're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but they shouldn't be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Someone right, didn't uh, want them. Mick Taylor. Uh, Mick. Mick. Uh, nope. Oh, nope. American supergroup. American supergroup. Oh, triple. A trio. A trio. American supergroup trio. Someone that you mentioned uh, had omissions to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mark so Farner. Grand Grand Punk guy? A guy from Grand no, Mark be, Farner? He said, no, he said they should not be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's a trio. Well known for vocals. Oh. Oh, Crosby, Stills. Uh, uh, Stephen Stills. Yes, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Stephen, Stephen Stills. Stephen Stills. Stephen Stills played piano on the Don't Come Easy. I beat you, Barry. I beat no, you. If you guys don't get this, uh, I'm, I'm I'm quitting. I will quit on the spot. All right. I'm gonna let Perry take it. Who played the flugelhorn on Uncle Albert on the Wall The answer is supposed to know that. The answer is Martin Stam. Two M's. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna I say Pat Benatar. No. All right. Who's the drummer on John Lennon's Imagine? Alan White. You are correct. Yeah. Of yes. Yeah, of yes. Yeah, not the Alan might have loved me do. The American version. Okay, who played piano? Glockenspiel chimes on ha Happy Christmas, War is Over, Give Me Love, and Phonograph. He played on all three. Great piano player. Great. Nicky Hopkins. You are correct, Perry. Nicky Hopkins. Hmm. Who played percussion on Paul McCartney's Live and Let Die? Percussion. Not the drums. That was Denny Sewell. Ray Cooper. Cooper. You are correct, Mark. Good one. One of the right. best, that was cool. most. Uh, by the way, Perry, the, the, the most well-known, probably, but uh, as far as percussion and rock and roll, yeah, yeah. Ray Cooper, hey, Perry, you can think of many yeah. others, but yeah. Mark why Smith. don't you play some of these? Why don't you play some of these clips? What source could happen to the show? Come on, let's Mark play Smith. some clips of it. You win. <laughs> play some Beatles solo clips. Oh <clears> my God. God! Who cares? <laughs> I got that one. You guys oh my are, you guys God! Are good. Who you guys are the good on hell that. Cares. <laughs> House of Gucci, Gucci, the Gucci. Did that's you get some, Mark? Did you that's get some all, albums that's to all reveal? I have. Yeah, I got blood yeah. all over. Okay. Um, oh, you, you mean you're actually bleeding? <laughs> yeah, I am. There's blood it's, on it's the music track. relish injury. Yeah. Uh, Put some ointment on it. I just drink some more wine. Stick your finger in the glass. That's What's an old killer. joke. What do you put on a sick pig? Ointment? That's right. <laughs> oh. Sound right. effect. Okay. <laughs> Damn, you know. Okay, there it is. <laughs> okay, I only got a few tonight. A band we talked about, Mott the Hoople. Whoop, 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 oh, whoop, wow. Whoop, whoop, whoa, whoa. whoa. Our friend okay. Sot Mitter said he could have weighed in on Mott the, Ho Mott the Hoople. Really? Said, you should have. I said, well, maybe if you could be on the show one day. He he on, we'll on send phone. him a link. Well, he can't do it. He's he's on his phone. He's off the grid. Kind of. That's um, all I got to say about that. Yeah. this I think this is the last album me and Hunter was on because it's got the uh, band version of All the Way from Memphis. So, so they they did do that on an album. I thought that That's was a band. Is, isn't that an Ian Hunter? I could have sworn that was an Ian Hunter solo hit. I thought well, Mod had he one, might have Mod recorded it because basically he wrote. Most of these songs by himself. Apparently, he wrote a lot of good songs. Being an yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, there's a you song in here called Violence, which I really like. He wrote it with Mick Rouse. And then uh, it's just it's a funny song. Uh, Ballad of Mott is on this album. I don't know if you ever heard that. Yeah, so, no. Ballad of Mott. So there was a Mott. Yeah. And my favorite song title, I'm a Cadillac slash El Camino Dolorosa. And the last song is "I Wish I Was Your Mother." It's great, great Ian Hunter stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, his new—he's got a new single out. It was actually pretty poppy, very nice, right? I liked what I yeah. heard. Yeah. yeah, he was yeah. interviewed on Sirius XM by Jim Ladd the other night. It was a good interview. And mm. apparently, Mike Campbell's on it. And uh, who was the other guy? Ringo. And Ringo. Ringo Starr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can get that, it. That anyway. was the single I mentioned um, on last week's show. I forgot the name of it. 
sub reference because yeah. I got it right here. Watch mm-hmm. out. Do, 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 do. Hey. Martha Hoople. Shropfordshire. Um, Bed of Roses is the first thing. Yeah, oh. that's it. Bed of like Roses. That. Yep. It goes like this. Bed of Roses. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it's better than the Bon Jovi Bed of Roses. <laughs> That's better broccoli. Lay it down. In a bed of, in a bed of broccoli. <laughs> with my general so's chicken. Or a steak. And my shrimp um, toast. Of garlic. <laughs> <laughs> it goes, sting a ding, ding, ding. Ding a ding, ding, ding. All right, we better get, before What's... Perry farts again, we better get on with this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. There's a guitar player. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him. He was one of my early influences with acoustic. I had young. I had a big blues thing going, acoustic blues. And there's a guy named John Fahey. You ever hear of him? Yes. Yes. I uh, have. This is, actually, yeah. yeah. This is called Live in Live in Tasmania. Excellent album. He does Waltzing <laughs> with Tilda. Tasmania is actually a place. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they have devils there, too. We actually, we carry New Zealand out that Tasmania. way. It's, it, in yes, fact, it it's just off the coast of New Zealand, right? All right. No, that's right. Australia. Is it New Zealand or, or Australia? I thought, I thought it was New Zealand. Well, they all have the same. Okay. Well, they all have the same. Uh, it's, all, it, it, yeah. it's all the land down under. Yeah, yeah. All right. Moving on in Bunda. Okay, post Motorhead. This is a spinoff of Motorhead. They had a guitar player, Fa- uh, Eddie Clark, or Fast Eddie Clark. Fast Eddie Clark. So I've heard in the early again. 80s, he had a band called Fastway. That's right. That's and right. Who, wait, look, who's in that? Look, Lemmy? The nice, remember this? The nice price on all those albums? That's so yeah. cool. I like that. Um, no, it's just, uh, well, Jerry Shirley's on drums from Humble Pie, right? Wasn't he in Humble Pie? I don't know. Really? And... Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> but you can call me lately. Um, I don't know anyone else, but yeah, Fast City Clark was good. This had a really good song called Tell Me. It was kind of a moderate hit. They Now, nah, you can't say they're a one-hit wonder because it didn't ever really. Yeah. But they were on Atlantic Record or whatever, a major label. Mm-hmm. And Eddie Trunk got me into them on his metal news on WDHA mm-hmm. out of Dover. So I went and bought it. Now, Fast Way, I think they had a hit song. Te- well, playing. Tell Me on this album was a hit. I don't know how high it got, but it was played a lot. Uh, it, was play, it was played on New York radio. Quite. Yeah. FM yeah. album radio, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back, it, when, it's a good song. back when that band, if they had a, a song that a DJ liked, that DJ could play that yeah. song and yep. actually make it a hit. You know? Yep. No power uh, anymore. I remember the when I went to my, see my sister in the Northwest and one of my bucket, whatever, my bucket list was to see Seattle. So she said, yeah, we'll drive you up there. And Seattle was everything I wanted it to be. I loved it. The thing is, I said, let me play, put on the local rock station. And it was Q104 of New York. It was the exact same shit. There was yeah. nothing unique about it. Wow. Locally, <laughs> our, only, our only two stations that I can get is 107.1 The Peak in, in White Plains. They're good. And Woodstock, WDST. They're really good. That's hmm. it. Every, everything else is corporate, you know? I'm XM. I do yeah, XM here. I'm, I'm, uh, I've been listening to the, uh, not classic vinyl, but the rewind, classic rewind, because sure. it's the 80s. Some of that stuff is good, you know? Yep. Oh, yeah. I like I like Earl Bailey. Yeah. Earl, Earl Bailey, Bailey on Deep Cuts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go deep, Earl. Um, I have to turn it down sometimes. I cracked my windshield the other day. I'm like, you guys got the deepest voice on the fucking planet. <laughs> I like Jim Ladd. I love his voice. Okay. How about right. Alan Hunter? Alan oh, Hunter's yeah, fun. yeah. <laughs> the squeaky clean guy. And then the last one, this was a big stoner album. All the Ed Hendrix fans <laughs> considered this his underground album. You had to have it. Rainbow Bridge. That's Recorded. where your doggy goes when that's where your doggy goes when he dies. Your doggy he did a crosses concert. the Rainbow Bridge. He he did a concert in Hawaii. Who? Who was the artist? Jimi Hendrix. Oh. Yeah. This came out. Possibly, but it's the songs from you know in the in the movie Rainbow Bridge. He's just playing. They tried to make a story out of it. It was horrible. It was, should have just been the concert. But yeah, there's a bunch of hippies going to see Jimi Hendrix, and there was a storyline and everything. But he played on the side of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. It's and you could see it any time. You could. It's all. I think it's on Prime. You can watch the concert. The thought of Jimi huh. Hendrix in Hawaii in the spiritual area. You know, that is cool stuff. 
It's a good uh, album. Uh, have you seen the video? Or I've yeah. never heard of it. Well, what year was it? Seventy. Uh, he did it. It's around the time he did Angel, so it would have been like right before he died, seventy or seventy-one. Hmm. And uh, it was one of those last. He was putting the album together when he died. It's one of the many things. So it's one of those albums that came out after he died. So there's really no direction. Yeah, it's since been recorded at his own studio. Yeah. It's yeah. since been re-released uh, the way that they think he wanted it. They're re-releasing all these old albums, but it's got some really good songs on it. It's it's he was, I love the direction he was going in with uh, Buddy Miles. I love that sound. I did more of an R and B sound. You didn't like it. Ah, nope. I what about like the it. band of gypsies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, that was to spend. The then he got Mitch Mitchell back, you know, and but he was Mitch going Mitchell in a weird the, direction. He was the man. Mitch Mitchell was the shit. <laughs> well, he, uh, I, think, I think the experience, I don't know. I, I, I've heard some Ben the Gypsy stuff. I don't think he was, he's total Jimmy in it. He was rebelling against the stuff. He he was, he he's felt been, restricted by the experience. He was playing with two, he was playing with two white guys too, right? I mean, but ironically, you know. Mitch Mitchell came back and I think Mitch Mitchell was his drummer when he died, right? He played with him at the I, Olive I, I White. Don't know. Yeah, he okay. was. He was. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Noel Redding never got back together with. There was some friction there. Hmm. What else? And you that's got my more? albums. Nice. Hmm? Okay. Cool. Martha yeah. Hoople. How timely. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. Wait, who who produced the Martha Hoople record? I. You know was what? It, was Lou? it Gus Gus Dudgeon? Lou, I knew you were going to ask that. I was if reaching is, for the that album. Guy's everywhere. Yeah, that everywhere, guy was on yeah. Elton yep. John El- records, Elton, right? Elton John, yeah. yeah. Died young, yep. too. Produced by Martha Hoople, arranged by Ian Hunter. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. And this is like their most produced glam. By the, produced by the band. band yeah. No, and this is seen. their most glam-looking album cover. I mean, they were like late 70s-style hmm. glam, you know? Almost like a heavy metal look. Yeah. 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 That that one solo hit I sent you guys, all the good ones are taken. I remember yeah. that from MTV, and I remember thinking, "This is a yeah. nice song," you know. All of the good well, ones Ian are Hunter taken. wrote uh, "Cleveland Rocks," <laughs> "Cleveland Rocks," yeah. right? Yep. And didn't he write uh, something else? He wrote another big hit to uh, "All the Way to Memphis." It's a mighty long way down. Yeah, that's right. Memphis, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that's right. I think this was considered their best album. Too. I can't think of it at the mm. moment. Yeah. Um, good album. Good album. That's like, that's the one album I can listen to pretty much all the way through. Not their other stuff. Mm. And I didn't like the albums they put out after or album or albums after uh, Ian left. Wasn't too pleased with them. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they gave it the old by the try, way, right? By the way, honorable mentions, Cleveland rocks, Dana Carvey show. That was a good show. Drew, Drew Carey. Drew Carey. Did a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, a Drew Carey show. No, no they, perhaps. Dana, they, Dana, Dana, Dana Carvey show was canceled after, uh, you know, if, I mean, it was way ahead of its time, Dana Carvey, yeah, on really. network television. Re- really? Yeah. Oh, never, yeah never saw try, look up on YouTube and look for the Dana Carvey show. Steve Carell. Oh, wow. Was, Steve Carell was uh, one of the writers and the cast members and also uh, wow. the other Steve. Uh Steve, um, who's the other Steve? Comedic. Steve Carell and the guy, he has a TV show. He's got a nightly show. They, um, Stephen hmm. Colbert was another person. Oh, yeah. that guy. Wow. Yeah, they were writers with Dana Carvey and uh, performers on the Dana Carvey show. Uh, strange, <laughs> man. Really strange. How long Stephen Colbert. Before? Stephen Colbert, that's French, bitch. They I'm had they had that. people like you know at the water cooler, or you know, just talking in German, and they sounded angry, but they weren't. They were talking about you know plain things, <laughs> like and then they sounded very angry. It's yeah. like, yeah. odd. I love you. Really odd. Really odd. Yeah, look up the Dana Carvey show on YouTube, okay. and you'll be shocked. But how ahead of its time it was. Yeah. Remember, remember in the late eighties and early nineties. Everyone was trying to put somebody into a late night show setting, and mm-hmm. a lot of them didn't work. I think the worst one was Chevy Chase. Did you ever see his show, his late night no. show? Uh, I saw a clip of it once. He was just bad at it. He's too he's too much of a wise ass to uh, have that kind and, of a show. Yeah, kind of a dick. Yeah. And his thing is, he had a piano next to his desk, so he looked like David Letterman at a desk. But then he had the piano, so when they went to yeah. commercial, he'd start playing the piano. I'm like, hey, shut up. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, knowing yeah. that he's a dick made it hard to watch, you know, because right. yeah. you knew he was just not being cool with anybody. Yeah. But in those days, too, it got petty, where if you were on if you were on Leno, you didn't do Letterman. Right, right. right. You know? Yeah. I remember David Letterman had a daytime, a morning show. Really? Probably, probably the early 80s, late I 70s, I saw a couple of clips 80s. of that, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I, could, I remember seeing him on doing stand-up on, on, the, on the rock shows, because they had comedians, too. And he was he he was okay. I, I don't remember yeah. anything he did, but I remember seeing him on the morning on the morning show, and that didn't work. It was, I thought it was a good show. It didn't work, but they went on late night. That was that was my late night show forever. Yeah. Oh, that was the best. Andy yeah. Breckman was, was one of his rides. It was, it was on. It was on what twelve? It was on twelve thirty, wasn't it? It was on after the Tonight Show. Yeah, yeah. Anyone <laughs> so, that came to school the next day. Owl. Like I, kids come in and say, "Did you see Eddie Van Halen and David Letterman?" And I said, "No, but I know you got two hours of sleep because." Yeah. <laughs> one of one of his that... writers was Andy Breckman, who uh, who wrote the uh, movie um, Sergeant Bilko with Steve Martin in it. Okay. And, uh, oh he created, yeah. He created Monk, the television show too. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Andy Breckman, and he has a weekly uh, radio show on ninety one point one WFMU. It's called Seven Second Delay. It's uh, oh. every week. It's just they just do comedy stuff, you know. They, yeah. they take phone calls from the bits. Just yeah, funny guy. Yep. Cool. WFMU out of Jersey City, I think, right? Yeah, out of uh, yeah, wherever it's from. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it used to be Upsala College, I think, way back. Up yours? Um, yeah, it's not a yours. college Up station though. Time. It's just an independent, non-commercial. Uh, they don't take yep. any corporate sponsors like some of the other That's stations right. well, Of course. Do. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Listeners, if you go to the WFMU homepage, if you go to their lookup search, look up Leo Kennedy and the Sharks, and you will find Perry and I on some songs. Immortalized forever. -promotion. Well, let's, Immortalized I, for infinity. Uh-oh. I don't have the closing theme, It's a great, it's a theme, great moment, guys. Mark. What's that? I don't have the closing theme. I guess, I guess I we're done with it. Well, I have some themes that we could close out with. Well, like what? what about, uh, you want some help? Like yet? time music. Yeah. Hey, I was playing along, man. Music yeah, Brothers man. Podcast. Yep. M Mark's got his junk plugged in. So wherever you get your uh, podcast from, we're on Spotify, Google, Apple, Pocket test. Those kind of things, yeah. And wherever you uh, wherever you listen to podcasts from, just type the Music Relish podcast, and it'll take you to one of those locations. Yep. And, and we're uh, on YouTube and Spotify. We're on Spotify. Yep. So I'm gonna say good night, guys. Good night, Gracie. Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs>